under Let green. Let him pretty slow, Kurt. That was a slow start. We'll see. We're going to see four or five wide log jam city. Here we go. That looked quite orderly. It was very simple. All things considered. Four wide. That was just the first start. <laughs> Long race to go. Now, no guarantees we will have restarts today. This race could go green all the way to the checker. Not likely, but possible. That's a good point, Mike. I mean, that's that's weighing heavily on all these teams. Engineers, drivers, everybody. So tight right through there, trying to get things sorted out. And here you comes don't want Cindric. To get that spot up. Cindric on the outside trying to take second from Reddick. Remember when he dominated in the rain here two years ago for There's that of the race. Jump, jump you were talking about. Yeah, Reddick didn't quite get the best turn one, and he's still trying to reel back, and he might have to settle into third. He's going to throw it in there. We'll, well see. Cindric ran him wide, and I don't think he liked it. He dove back down to the inside, took that position away. And there they go. They're all the way down that long back straightaway. Going to be grabbing fifth gear, 175 miles per hour down into turn 12. My money's on uh, the 45 here at Outbreakham. Off of a 40 mile an hour corner, mind you. Full send right here. Send it in there. Well, and look at Suarez. Look what it does for him. Those two need to sort that out pretty quick or else he's going to get a two for one. Seen that many times on that corner. I think that was generous of Cindric to kind of yield and get settled in here. Smart. This is that tight stadium section. Man, oh. Torres dove it in yeah, there, he took that there. spot, door slammed Cindric. <laughs> Almost spun out Reddick in doing so. And that happens sometimes where that, that car that's not even expecting anything because the two behind them are racing so hard, you end up getting clobbered from two cars back. Cool corner, though. It, it opens that you have to get that wide entrance, but it opens the door up for somebody to take it. And that's exactly what Suarez did. Cindric coming right back on the inside. That's the preferred line right there at turn 20. Yeah, that's some great racing. Of positioning back, going back again, and then having some crossovers. Clean air is so important. That's why these drivers are fighting tooth and nail for those early positions. Huge dive bomb. Noah Gregson up two spots on the first lap. Kyle Larson up three. That was Almendinger. Really dove it in. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Keselowski. Caution. Well, here it is. Didn't know if it was going to happen. Sure enough. And Jimmy Johnson in the pit lane. Right rear down on him. Oh. Multiple contact between turn 19 and 20. Puts us under caution after lap one.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Ford, built for America. Caution completing lap number one. It looked yeah, like fine. Chris Busher may have spun uh, right into the path of Jimmy Johnson, Ty Dillon, Brad Kozlowski. Yeah, definitely yeah. done for the day for Ty Dillon. Heavy front end damage into the 48. Questionable there. 48, 84. Yeah, I, I was going to catch you there. But yeah, this is uh, the carousel. And now we're diving down into 19, where we've seen most of the contact from all these guys. Again, yep. Johnson's on the inside. He's kind of minding his own business. He's, he goes way left. 17 moves Boom. over to avoid the car spinning. Gets into Ty Dillon in 77, into Jimmy Johnson in 84. Their days are definitely done. Yeah, that was a hard hit for the 84. It's a six, Brad Keselowski spinning. And I'm sure the six didn't just spin by himself. I'm That's sure right. he was assisted in some way. All right, way. Keselowski was able to continue. Well, he got assist, but it yep. was off of the, that was them lowering blocks I was talking about, limited, ride limiters. That thing will bottom out, take you for a ride. Might have bottomed out on Gunther's uh, carbon fiber parts. Jimmy Johnson on pit road, under repair. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express Card. 
and by Verizon Frontline, built for 5G, built to make a real difference on the front lines. Welcome back to the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. Stock Car Racing's King, Richard Petty. And uh, his cousin Dale Lindman there with the headset on, watching intently as one of the cars they're affiliated with has gone a lap down in that crash, that being Jimmy Johnson. Well, let's bring in NASCAR Cup winningest active road course driver, Chase Elliott, recuperating in, uh, in Colorado. Uh, thanks for joining us today. Glad we could make this work. I know you'd sure rather be out there uh, than, than sitting where you are. But we got off to a great start in turn one, and then what happened? And how are you doing, most importantly? Yeah, I'm doing really good. I uh, appreciate you guys having me. And thanks to Fox for, for setting this up and, and making this go. So um, I'm looking forward to yeah, just watching the race with you guys. I don't know. We're just kind of getting started. I was hoping we could get more than a lap or so going to understand a little bit of what's going on. I saw Jordan kind of had a tough opening lap. But yeah, I hate Jimmy got taken out there. But uh, a lot of racing left and excited to see kind of where it goes and, and some of the things that um, some of the things I can see from this vantage point is super different than what I'm used to seeing. Obviously, I must be in there, too, but um, we're working through it, so we'll make the most of it. Man, seeing that headset on you, buddy, I, I don't, why didn't they pick you to replace that crew chief set on top of that box? I think you might be able to do it. Yeah, I don't know about, I think that'd probably go as good as you doing it, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> so I'm not sure that, <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good idea, but, you know, actually, we joked around about it a little bit. Uh, last couple weeks and um yeah so i don't know never say never but i don't know that uh, my my crew chiefing abilities would go over too high well you and jordan have been uh, texting back and forth after every session that he's been in the car and i know you've been uh, a big help to him he said as much on the pre-race show but what kind of advice uh, can you give somebody who's a winning race car in his own discipline but is new to this kind of racing it, it's tough, and I think from my perspective, I've just tried to probably say too much just in case something dumb that I say happens to make sense, right? <laughs> I, I would I would rather give him too much yeah. information and, and just like one of those things click in his mind. Um, you know, and I, I did run the Rolex 24, you know, a couple years ago. So some of those things I do feel like the cars are very different, but I think anything I can do just to say, hey, this was a big hitter for me and me transitioning to those cars you know let's think about it from from the other way how can how can i help you get this direction um, so i've really just been giving him as much information as i possibly can anything i see um, and i've been super in tune with with his comments and post practice meetings and post qualifying meetings so i've been i've been talking a lot probably too much um, and I'm sure a lot of it probably doesn't make sense to him and probably doesn't make sense to anybody but me. Uh, but it's just in hopes that just one or two little things might might stick and, and could make a difference today. So I'd, I'd rather give him too much information and him li not listen to 99% of it and just that 1% help. I feel like that was it was worth it. Yeah, Chase, I mean, that's exactly how I've been with uh, our team at 2311, with Tyler Reddick, with Bubba Wallace. I've been just trying to give as much information, right? And yet it's a, it's, it's a delicate balance because there's so much experience that, that Jordan has and with Tyler, with Bubba, all behind the wheel. And so it's, it's a delicate feel, but yet you, we don't want to miss anything. We want them to be their best. But most of all, first of all, it's just great to see you, my friend. I know all the fans wanted to see you, and I'm hoping uh, PT is going well and you'll get back to the track soon. What about this racetrack? What do you love about this racetrack? What was the challenges? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a definitely a, a unique one, and, and honestly one that I feel like I struggled with the most, I would say, of all the of all the road courses. I, I really struggled at Sonoma early on. I feel like I've gotten better there, but Coda was a really tough one, and I think a lot of it is just the length of the track. And that sounds super simple and easy, but there's a lot of turns, and there's a lot of really technical places on this track. And, and I think one thing that probably gets lost in translation with, with road racing in general is you know we talk about going to Fontana and how old the track surface is and we talk about going to Atlanta and how new the track surface is well turn one might be abrasive and the stadium section might be repaved and and I think that's one of those things that that probably doesn't get talked about a lot in, in road course racing and and just those really small fine details can can make a big difference so it's a really technical place the laps are long uh, and and the the grip level in the track really changes a lot from from turn to turn 
Well, thanks for being with us. Uh, Chase is going to be with us through the day. Since none of the leaders chose to pit under this first caution of the day, we're going to step away with William Byron leading from the pole. Getting ready for the restart from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. Here they come around the stadium section and into the final couple of corners before we restart with the choose. Byron on the inside, Todd Reddick outside. I was quite impressed by what Chase had to say and also Kurt that they speak with their drivers or with the guy which took over his drive. I think. That is, we asking why are they so quick uh, as well, uh, Redick uh, uh, and uh, Taylor. I think that is part of it because they were well trained. You know, you're thinking about it, and I think it's 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 pretty cool from the guys putting the effort in to give them their knowledge to do better. You know, sure Very is. Good. Here they approach the Geico restart zone. Yeah, it was definitely a big part of their success. Here we go, Kurt. A little bit better launch from Redick, uh, and then again, it's just going to fan out. And then it's a matter of how much contact. Wow, look out back. Four, five, six wide. That's Ran Reddick high. Sure did. And he's I think that was William lead. Byron. That's uh, Sendrick snuck by both. That's where the front row took each other in so deep. The second row was able to take advantage of it. And that's where Sendrick's your new leader. I love that corner. Austin Sendrick it. from third. Sendrick. Started racing Bandolero and Legend cars at Charlotte, but has ra road raced in seven different countries. And all that experience paying off right here. Ooh, Reddick tossing it back in there. And this is a good spot where you want to be on the on the right. 
And then you got to try to clear him by the time you come down this hill. Be interesting to see if Byron throws, throws it back in there. All right, they're settling out, but back here, three wide. Jordan Taylor, Whoa, big time dive Taylor. on. Locked that left front He's up, got here. into the You're back of Eric Jones. Can't tell if he mid, spun mid. him out or not. I think they're fine. Oof. Oof. That's how easy it's done. That's, that's the experience that he doesn't have in these cars. Right. Got in there, locked that up. He was, uh, you know, he was dive bombing, trying to stay off of his teammate Kyle Larson. Man, that was so close. One of the toughest things yeah, to do. Now the, now the concern is, sorry, Kurt, I jumped on you, but I was just going to say, now the concern is, is now that he locked up that left front tire, is it going to lock up easier now that it has a flat spot in it coming into these other hard braking zones, which, you know, is never a fun feeling for a driver, right? So hopefully that's not the case. It looked okay into 12, so hopefully not. And that's one of the things I was going to say. It's like it's so difficult as a new driver to go, how long did I lock that up? Or my awareness and my, my bearings, where was I? And that's why he ended up so deep. But then it's like, does he know how much he hurt the tire? It's very difficult to do that when you're a new guy in, in a big, heavy car like this. Well, hey, and you don't think you're, you're the new guy and all those guys don't know that. They know how fast you are. Your experience level is going to show that. They saw the lap times in qualifying and, and in practice. But these restarts are a whole different animal. You guys know that better than most. Trying to get him, you know, he just went spread out. Let me go back to work. Exactly. Just let me see some of my, my normal, like, pickup points on corner entry and exit. And turn one still has the excitement of the. There, well, that's oh, what there we go. Is. They're turn bouncing one. off each other. It was three guys, three wide, right next to each other, and the car up front got hit, and he Chase wasn't even Frisco. expecting to get hit. Well, he did. He now he's even got play. a long hole to dig out of. Frisco was 17th. Very impressed with Cindric, how he navigated that restart, took advantage of William Byron, Reddick getting into one another, got them both. He's the one that's the quiet, quiet guy out there. Everybody saw the speed in Reddick. You can see him getting right to back to his rear bumper. Obviously, William Byron on the pole, but Cindric, a lot of experience on these road courses with him. Go back to the restart, you'll see Austin Cindric. Yeah, William Byron already bouncing off uh, the outside of and running Reddick wide. Suarez almost got them both as well. Yeah, one of the toughest things is when your pace isn't up and now you're down into turn 11 with Taylor. Oof. Oh, yeah, it's just that's where the front just isn't going to turn if you're on the brake that hard. And then back in turn one, uh, we'll show you what happened to Briscoe. Yeah. Now, Joey Logano is going to get a pass through penalty because we don't have track limits here like Formula One except through the S's. NASCAR says through the S's, stay on the racing surface, and they consider the red and white rumble strips to be part of the racing surface. But if you're inside those in the S's, you have shortcutted the course and you must do a drive through penalty at pit road speed, 40 miles an hour. Yeah, big penalty. You know, that's kind of self-policing until it's not. You know, Popo's got the radar gun out, and he's looking. I bet you it's in that hot spot turn four. We'll try to find footage of it, but that's an easy place to gain a lot of time, but it's, it's not worth the risk if you're going to end up getting busted. Big penalty. Won't go a lap down like you would uh, on another racetrack, a shorter racetrack, you know, your ovals, but... Uh, Probably a, at least a 45-second penalty. Man, Reddick is all over him. He's bringing the heat. He wants that lead back big time. He's got Byron right on him. I mean, this is usually when you find trouble at this track, is when second's hustling the leader, and then third place is applying pressure from back there. Chase, what's your thinking on the opening laps of a race like this? Do you want to lead if you can? A pickup spots, or do you want to just establish a rhythm early on? Well, I think the big one's getting through turn one. I mean, I know we talk about it a lot, but it's very true. I mean, I look at Jordan. He qualified fourth there, right? Now he's outside the top ten in, in just a couple of laps. Um, so I think a lot of it's just getting into a rhythm. I mean, I, I talk about it that a lot with road course racing, but I think a lot of it's just falling into a rhythm, whether that's in first or whether that's in fifth. I think getting to that point without having damage on your car is key. I mean, look at something as simple as what happened to Briscoe. 
yes, it looked like he just got turned, but he got hit straight in the left rear tire. So if I had to guess that now he's got left rear toe link damage, that's going to impact him for the rest of the day. So sure. while the front and rear bumpers are extremely um, robust on these cars, the, the actual suspension is not. So it's, uh, it's definitely a fine balance. But I think just finding a rhythm, whether that's first or fifth, got a great battle for the lead. Yes, we Tyler's do, buddy. in a great buddy. spot to go ahead. These guys are battling door to door, back and forth. You dive bomb me, I'll take it back. Unbelievable race. And hey, why we're talking about that, the 11 and the 7, both caught. Cutting the course back there will be making a uh, pass through penalty. This is lap seven. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are racing like it's lap 67. This is awesome just to see these guys going back and forth and the respect that they're showing right now. I don't know if that'll happen later. And NASCAR will point to the parity. Unlike Formula One, here's a Toyota, a Ford, and a Chevrolet. One, two, three. Yeah, uh, they all compete. And I think, uh, uh, as it was said before, they just try all to get in a rhythm now, I think. And then after the first pit stop, trying to uh, divide a little bit more. But in the moment, just get in a rhythm and know where you are at and get to the first of the end of the sta first stage. Tyler Reddick, one of three drivers to lead in the first eight laps at Circuit of the Americas. You have a nice cold coke, sugar, sugar, and buckle up. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Working lap nine of the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. Tyler Reddick is the race leader. Uh, add Michael McDowell to the list of drivers who have been penalized for shortcutting the S's. And we'll show you the footage on Joey Logano uh, that was used to call his penalty, along with Denny Hamlin and Corey LaJoy. Yeah, you see him coming the last car in the frame. Right and those there. tires are definitely under it. You can't get underneath those rumble strips. Boom, right there, busted, pass through penalty every time. That's the NASCAR officials camera, that video pushed to Fox. Here's what uh, Joey and team had to say. All day yesterday, they call it right off the bat. Be consistent, NASCAR, come on. 
Be consistent, Joey says. Okay? They grabbed three other guys right after you. So? Yeah. We'll see, I'll, I'll I would a, say that's the hot spot. Consistent. Let's call NASCAR the Care Bears well, here's, in that corner right here's now. They're the, just going to keep busting on all the S's. The thing about that corner, though, in Joey's situation, you got three cars in front of you. He was late to see where he was at, and then all of a sudden it's in your lap. Uh, and, and that's the hard thing about that running off the track right there. Alex Bowman moving up uh, for fifth on Daniel Suarez. Jamie. Well, Chase Elliott mentioned it. Jordan Taylor had a tough couple of opening laps there, and he radioed to the team once he had communication with them. He told him, I'm just trying to keep my car clean, trying not to get banged around so much. Guys, he's never raced against these guys. He didn't know how aggressive they would be and how much they would lean on each other. So he's trying to figure out his competition while figuring out his race car at the same time. <laughs> Welcome well, they to the show. That. Yeah, <laughs> that's Welcome. exactly right. Those yellow stripes on the back of there, they'll eat you every time. That's all right. Now, now's where you find a rhythm. Now's where you get settled in, and this is where he'll start to shine. So in the e accident at the end of lap one, Ty Dillon and Jimmy Johnson out of the race. Here's Regan Smith. Well, Jimmy Johnson checked and released from the infield care center. Jimmy, I know you were so excited about today. How disappointing is this one? Yeah, it's really disappointing, but you know, it comes with racing. It's part of it. Unfortunately, we didn't have a good day yesterday in qualifying, and we're back there around around the wreck, and we know that those those things can happen. So uh, just most disappointed for Club Wyndham. I'm very thankful they came on board for this race, and sadly, we didn't take you know one, one lap under green. Thanks, Jimmy. Seven-time champ out of the race early here. Oh! Bubba hard in the back of Kyle Larson turns him around really hard. Larson trying to refire as Wallace Major. pulls away. We are still under green. Major damage on the front of turn 12 is where this happened. That breaking zone at the end of the long straightaway. And Larson will drive away. Oh. Woo. Whoa! Whoa. It's Some, almost like his brakes went out. Went wrong. Yeah. Holy smokes. Sailed it in there. That may be the, it's obviously probably the end of that 23 cars day with Bubba Wallace, but eh, I thought he hit him in the left rear wheel, Kurt. I don't, I think that's going to be okay. Let's uh, ride with the Money Lion onboard camera in Bubba's car. That thing just never slowed down. I mean, he jumped out to pass a car under braking, and then it just was, it was gone after that. I've never really seen that. You heard the tires complaining when the brakes locked up, but car did not slow there. See the fluid on the back of that car, too, in the camera. And Cody Ware with a spin. Overcorrected. Kyle Larson in trouble again. And this is where guys would want to pit because the yellow is most likely going to come out. Maybe a few guys did sneak on to pit road. And caution is out. I wonder if Larson was trying to get to pit road. And Fire couldn't. back up here. And he got in the oil of the car that wiped him out. That's exactly what happened. So Larson gets going again, and we have the second caution flag of the day. Oh, oh Kyle Larson turned by Denny, by Denny Hamlin. Denny Hamlin.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? And by Toyota. Let's go places. Working lack 12, second caution of the day. Here's why. Bubba Wallace slow on the right. And you're going to have Denny Hamlin coming in and Kyle Larson. I mean, Bubba's wounded. He's trying to get back to the pits and then like, I mean, I think the five was trying to get to the pits too. Well, I think he was definitely trying to get to the pits. I mean, it all came down to, you know, Bubba being wounded with that rear end being broke, everything else you see. And 11 coming around there so fast made, uh, you know, a last minute uh, try to avert around him and got into that five again. Pretty bad couple of corners for Kyle. Man, it was just, yeah, let's just check in with the 11 radio. Trying to get it to 23 because he just stopped. I don't believe so. I don't. I don't believe so. I think he was trying to get to pit road. Quite possibly. Now, uh, yesterday we heard from Kyle Busch that in driving in the Xfinity race, a car with a conventional H pattern shifter developed a blister because we don't have those kind of shifters anymore in the cup cars. We have sequential shifters. Here's a look with Larry McReynolds and our Toyota cutaway car. Prior to 2022, the transmission in our race car was a four-speed manual transmission. In our current car, it's actually a five-speed, a sequential shifter. Let's go inside the Toyota Tech Center to our Toyota cutaway car, and let's take a look at the sequential shifter. It's still located on the right-hand side of the driver, and to upshift, he just keeps clicking it back all the way to fifth gear. Downshift, you just move it forward. Now, it works pretty simple. There's a rod that goes through the rear firewall to the top of the gearbox, and that's what actually changes changes the gear. Now remember, this is a 3.41 mile road course. We've seen where drivers will be shifting roughly 25 times a lap. Mike, 68 laps. That's almost 1,700 shifts in this race today. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Pits will be open this time under this second caution of the day. Looks hot in there. And we've got uh, three to go on this stage here. Uh, this will be Interesting, if you want to stay out, grab some stage points and then pit while it's going to be under green is what we would assume. Uh, but there's still a lot of cleanup left. And remember, no stage breaks in road racing this year. Uh, because you could pit without losing a lap, that meant you had to decide either stage points or track position to win the race. And we've taken that out of play. We will still award stage points at the end of each stage at the end of lap 15 and lap 30. Still hard to get your head wrapped around it, Mike. I remember, you know, I had to think back of what that felt like. You know, we're so used to stage ends, not just stage points, that that caution comes out with a couple to go before the stage. Well, we're good, you know. Now, you stay out there, run a few more laps. I'm, you, you mean we're going to pit in four or five laps? That's your strategy? How's that going to work? <laughs> Larry. Yeah, Clint, that's the way we did it for years, though, before this stage racing. But, yeah, we only have seven laps on the tires. Now, if you're back in the pack, go ahead and get fresh tires. Go ahead and make adjustments. With this few laps to go, you need to get to lap 17 to make it work on a three-stop straight race. You need to get to lap 23 to make it on two stops. The leader, leader is in. Ooh, leader just gave up those points. Going for that win. It's close enough. Larry told us that fuel window is somewhere to 20 to 24 laps. A little gambling on the line, going for this win. About a third of the field comes to pit road. Regan. Well, Mike, the call came to Tyler Reddick immediately when the caution came out that they would be pitting. They never changed their mind throughout the course of the time that they had around the lap right there. His race car started off just a little bit free, but he's happy with it right now. I mean, basically what that says you know, that's your shot fired. That's laying in the bed you make. And what that means is you run these races backwards. The math is there. Now you're going to need some cautions to make that math work. What I'm seeing, you probably see him, Kurt. Uh, Corey LaJoy picked up a penalty for too fast exiting. We'll be lined up and choosing for the restart when we come back. You're watching NASCAR on Fox from the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas.
That looks different today. I better let uh, Gino, let's give him a call. <laughs> <laughs> From drive to survive, uh, one of the most heard lines. I'm curious, we say pit, everybody says pit. In, in NASCAR. How did Formula One transition from pit to box, box, box? Don't ask me where it came oh. from. It's normally, it's there since I'm there. So it was okay. there before me, basically. So I think it's just like box, box, box. Yeah, that's what you call pit, pit. It's I guess it's hard yeah. for that to be mistaken for anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I it's hope so. pretty clear. <laughs> <laughs> now, you're no stranger to NASCAR because you worked for Jaguar and Red Bull and were a technical advisor when Red Bull came to NASCAR 05 and 06. How has this side of the sport changed since then? Most ah, dramatically. It has, uh, it has changed immensely technically. I mean, the car, look at this car, they're a different car now uh, than they were 15, 16 years ago or even four, three years ago when this new car came. But I think that uh, the sport got a lot more technical. If you walk to the garage now, we've got a lot more engineers. In the old days, there was yeah. not many. Each team had one. And now I think everybody's got the, what we call the war room back at home, you know, where engineers look at data, look at TV, give advice to people on the pit box because there's only a certain amount up there which can take place. But uh, it has just developed like everything. Everything yes. in the world develops, you know, but NASCAR has followed pretty, pretty good there. Very much so. So, would you like to drive on a NASCAR track? I mean, sure you do. Who wouldn't? Well, here's Michael Waltrip with details for you. Echo Park is doing something really cool for their customers. They can take their cars to the track. Go to speedwaymotorsports.com slash take it to the track for more information. Can you imagine rolling out on the Atlanta Motor Speedway, Charlotte, Texas, Vegas? Man, so much fun. Echo Park, that's where it's at. Thanks, Michael. 14 laps. We're working 14. William Byron, Austin Sindrick, A.J. Allmendinger, Alex Bowman, all of whom have figured in the finishes of the prior races here, and Daniel Suarez, who won at Sonoma last year. Jamie. Well, Mike, that incident involved a five of Kyle Larson, so I checked with his team. He brought it into pit road, and they said he was going to pit. And when that happened, Denny got into the back of him and spun him around. They checked the car. They did have some pretty significant damage in the left rear area. They were able to shut off the engine, work on it. He went back out. He's going to come in and, and top off. But he said the wheel's straight. Everything else looks good. Good. A lot of that damage, it looked to me like it was back on that rear bumper just before that oh-so-important left rear tire. These boys up front, Kurt, they are putting on a show. And look who's starting to show his face into that show. Almendinger won yesterday's race, and there he is. Bubba out of the race, unfortunately. Frustrated. Yeah, too much damage on that car to continue from the incident with Hamlin and Larson. Now, Larson on the damaged vehicle policy clock, so uh, he's going to have to take this restart and get going. Here's uh, A.J. Almendinger's radio. There's your strategy, Regan. Clint, it's been big troubles for AJ Allmendinger right now. He has no communication. They briefly had it, and that's when they updated him exactly on when he would need to pit in case he's got to make the call from the driver's seat himself. You know, so interesting though, here in that fuel strategy, that's why they told him that. That's pretty much what you heard across the board when I was down in the garage earlier all day long. That 24 lap, 24 number keeps coming up for everybody's fuel mileage and then at 44, 45 gets you to the end of the race. All right, now this restart is for stage points. They will be awarded as they cross the start finish line, but no stage break, the race goes on. Interesting, yeah, so there'll be the restart zone and then maybe about 200 more yards will be the line and where the points will come out. But the big thing to remember here, these tires, they're old on the on the top 15 guys. Lots of refires. They're gonna be slip sliding around double extra on this restart. And I would most likely see everybody start pitting in this window of 15 up to that 24 number. There we go. It's, it's gonna be an interesting one with all, this, all the old tires. Back to green. And Byron will be credited with the stage win over Sindrick, 
Almendinger, Bowman, and Chastain. Okay, stage two. Come on, everybody in the corner. 45 went super low to the inside. Fresh tires with him. Harvick's got fresh tires as well. And there's a bunch of them back there that are kind of just log jammed up with fresh tires. So and when's the best time to capitalize on those fresh tires? Immediately, when everybody's balled up, everybody's slipping, sliding around. That's a gorgeous view. I love watching the serpentine through there. It's like the old video game centipede. <laughs> And it's tight, asking a lot out of those cars as switchbacks back and forth, back and forth. Car wants to get laterally loose, hard to handle there. Chase, what are you seeing on these restarts? Chaos. What are you seeing? <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean I you know, I, I think it's interesting. Obviously the, the strategies are are there's a wide variety of them, right? But yeah, still just three and four wide guys getting run off the road. So again, I feel like having all these cautions early on in the race, at some point, I think it's going to get strung out. You're going to get some long green flag runs. And then we're going to start to see whose strategy is, is going to work out for, you know, work, work out best later in the race. How, how do you work that, right? How do you, the thought process in your mind? Uh, obviously the positions are important, but you got to have that in the back of your mind, that mentality, man, I got to finish this thing. I got to have some patience here as well. Well, I, for me, I feel like those opening laps would have been a bit more tame. I feel like them than what, than what it was. And, and I think that's probably the case for, you know, for everybody, but I think, well, I say that and, and Suarez about gets to 48, but you know, I think that, uh, at some point, again, and, and, and we see this a lot, anytime races have a bit of a wild start, I feel like then they start to get strung out. You're going to get some going to get some runs. So I anticipate that coming here probably now. At 48, that was hot. Yeah, obviously, Suarez didn't like that. Put the bumper to him, moved him up. Bowman tried to stay with it and slid off the racetrack. Yeah. Three wide, Blaney on the inside and Boy, Noah Gregson almost bit the guardrail coming out of turn 20 here. There's the Suarez and Bowman. It's like he was trying to cross over and wasn't quite <laughs> clear, and he was trying to get to his inside. I was like, whoops, my bad. Well, he actually clipped that, you know, Bowman enough that Bowman missed the entrance of that corner, and then the car gets out from underneath of him and gets loose. Here's Jamie. Bubba Wallace has been checked and released. We saw the contact you had with the 11 and the five there, Bubba. But what happened to the car that puts you out of the race? Um, broke toe link in the rear and then oil on. Just uh, trying my hardest not to go down that slippery slope of self-doubt right here. Two weeks in a row making rookie mistakes. Six years in a cup. Need to be replaced. Thanks, Bubba. Ooh. Ah, he's always so hard on himself. I mean, he, he wants the best and he, he wants to continue to improve on the road courses and and short tracks where he knows he's good and then the mile and a half are his his cup of tea but man you're all right man there's there's mistakes that happen just don't make the same one twice William Byron's fourth stage win of 2023 uh, most of all drivers he only had four stage wins in all of 2022 he is the hottest thing in the sport right now now earlier in the weekend we saw uh, we saw patches on people from different racing schools, Skip Barber and others. Uh, Byron has his own personal driver coach, and it's former IndyCar star Max Pappas uh, is his development uh, coach. And boy, you can see on these road courses the difference uh, that that has made for William Byron. Yeah, Max Pappas, he's a great guy. I mean, he's he's from Italy. He's got the MPI steering wheels. And when you talk to Max, right, Gunther, he goes, well, of course, I'm Italian. I am more superior than you. I know how to drive. <laughs> Max is great. I love him. Connor Daly back in uh, 34th there. And Ryan Blaney started out back. He's up to 27th right now. We're going to take you, Fox, side by side.
working lap 18 Ryan Blaney uh, got off course in a one corner and came in for a left rear left side tires. Brad Kozlowski spun multiple incidents here while we were in break. Might have got a little help there. Okay. Got spun by the Blaney that was on pit road. Spun. Yep. The guy got it was Larson that got into him. One thing I noticed is the lap time the guys can do on the used tires in the front. The people which didn't come in, they can do the same lap times as the people which put new tires on. So that's quite amazing. I thought the guy, the guys on the new tires, will catch up, but uh, they are not in the moment. So I don't know. That's a great observation. Yeah, I thought the pace would have been quicker yeah. with stickers on for yeah. sure. That's pretty hard uh, contact for Blaney uh, there with Larson. And so that's an extended stay on pit road, likely toe link getting replaced in the left rear. So you see when the drivers were in uh, since uh, their last pit stop, we've run 18 laps. So all those 18s are drivers that have not yet stopped in this race. Well, I think that opens the door up. It's an interesting perspective that you notice that, Gunther. That that opens the door up for the conversation of fuel mileage. That's really why you're trying to offset yourself and differentiate yourself from these front runners. It's take advantage of something else strategy-wise. You guys don't have that. All you have is tires in F1. Yeah, it, it, it is very easy in F1, as you say, you know, compared to this one, no. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, that's a big difference. If you have to calculate fuel mileage, it, 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 it's a lot more difficult to get the tire sorted out. Uh, we just look at the degradation of the tire, and then we decide when and where to change. Yeah, and then so have here's what I see, you know, guys. One pit stop. Absolutely. Go ahead, Larry. Yeah, here's what I see, guys. When we come back around, we're coming to lap 20. That'll be 48 laps to go right there. Split that in half. That's 24 laps to run. I think the window's about to open for a lot of these leaders to come to pit road. In the perfect world, you come, and then a caution comes out, and everybody else has to pit under caution. You don't want to be the last one to pit under green. Yeah, and if you have the opportunity, like you said, to, to jump a caution. But these guys are showing such good pace that are – that are out front, Larry. I just don't see the advantage of, of the guys pitting because if I'm not mistaken, I think you can two stop this race. I'm not sure it's required to do three. So just keeping their track position and keeping themselves out of trouble. Look what happened to Kyle and, and Ryan there. Those two cars definitely have damage. Well, Martin Truex and Tyler Reddick are flying up through the field uh, after pit stops. They've climbed to 12th and 13th now. Here's the Toyota cam on board Truex. As long as you got a, a group of them ahead of you like that, it's, it's easy to gain those spots. And what happens, though, is when the pit cycle starts, now you get all that clean air back up front. So all these different varying strategies are going to start to unfold here once, these, once the lead group pits. And that's how you do it better than the rest. Two for one. Take advantage of that Martin Truex trying to make the pass on Ryan Priest. Cross them over. Pass them both. Boom. Rolling that 45 car. Fastest car on the track all weekend long. I know William Byron beat him on that last round of, of qualifying. But without a doubt, Reddick, check this out. They went wide. He was able to turn under them, take advantage of a, a neat uh, situation corner that they have on this place. Gave him room, though. See, he gave uh, Truex plenty of room. And that's what I like about yeah. that, is racing each other with respect. All that contact is uh, just going to slow you down. Yeah, there might have been a little Toyota camaraderie there. It's like, all right, you're a little quicker. I'll let you go for right now. Regan. Well, Kyle Busch deciding to peel off onto pit road. His race car been a little loose with the rear of it so far to start the race, complaining about the back sliding around more than he needs. All right, well, you heard them guys. They're talking about coming on that 24. Well, I need some track position. How am I going to do that? Come a little bit early. Just yes. a button on pit road. He had gotten up uh, into the top 15 and makes his first NASCAR pit stop alongside Almirola. And, you know, talking to him, Kurt, in the pre-race, this was right down his game plan. He's going to be patient. You could feel that in his conversation that he had with us, and I think it's paying off for him. Yeah, when you're in such a unique situation with the car, uh, you just want to make no mistakes and just try, try to stay nice, smooth, and simple. But he knows this racetrack. 
he knows Coda, so he's able to apply things. And once you cross over halfway through the race, it's like, all right, I've gained all the knowledge that I have. It's time to apply it. Look at the fenders on that car, though. That's what I'm saying. Very patient out there. A lot of chaos, a lot of torn up race cars already. A lot of big name drivers out of this race. See Jordan Taylor's, he's wanting them tires, needing them tires. Austin Dillon's all over him. Can't really, side even. can't really settle in at this racetrack, can you, Chase? Always something, if you if you try to give up a position, now the car two behind you is, is in there too, and you end up, end up giving up two. Yeah, and we, we see that a lot with these cars now too. They're so draggy. When guys get side by side, you almost open up the door for the person behind you, even at ovals. But when I look at this track in particular, a lot of your passing zones lead to corners that put you in the unfavorable lane. So I look at turn one, you're obviously going to try to outbreak someone to the left. Well, that puts you on the outside going down the hill for turn two, which then has you out of position, much like coming into turn 11. You're trying to outbreak to the left, and then that puts you in a, I'm sorry, into 12. That puts you in a really tough position going into that stadium uh, stadium section. So just a, a really awkward track, and those, those braking zones really put you in a bad spot for the next turn. Well, that's what it was designed for, <laughs> the entertainment side of it and the ability to make those crossover passes. And you're exactly right, Chase. It's the braking zone is one thing, and then the next set of corners, uh, you never really can get away from a guy cleanly once you do make a pass. So Ty Gibbs pits from seventh. And if you look at your scoring pile on the top seven drivers have yet to make an appearance on pit road down through Christopher Bell uh, add in Truex and Taylor to that mix. Everybody else has been on pit road at least once. Well, things are finally starting to calm down a little bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> Took a while, didn't it? <laughs> well, it'll be interesting. You know, we heard Almendinger told be told that he's going to pit on 24 if these guys peel off a lap before maybe two laps before do you follow them or do you stay out stick to the to the game plan there i mean what's cool is we got one two three four all top four cars right there uh, this is uh, one of those like ins and out laps in f1 where it's like push 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 right to get as much as you can on your in and on your out lap to try to leapfrog guys yeah, you try to undercut sometimes people, but I look at the lap times and the, and the guys with uh, uh, no pit stop yet, they are still making the same times as people which change the tires. So maybe the best strategy is to get until you need the fuel and uh, do a two stop. That's you know, what this is. Yeah, it looks like, yeah. At yes, the moment, sir. yeah. So yeah. if you split this up equally, it'd be yeah. 23, 23, 22. But they split it 24, 24, 20, because you need to have some fuel left in case of overtime. Yeah. So, which driver will have the better finish at the end of stage two? That is one of Clint's Super Six questions. And not just which driver will be ahead of the other, but by how many positions? Got to put your thinking cap on to win 10 grand today on uh, Fox Pit Super Six. May have to be lucky. I'd say, though, the biggest movers. Uh, let's go down to Jamie with the nine. Uh. Well, Jordan Taylor, he's never made a pit stop in NASCAR. This is unlike anything he's done before in any of the kind of racing. It's four tires and fuel here, a little bit tight on corner entry, but so many things he's hearing and thinking about right now. Seems to be a good stop for Jordan Taylor in the nine. See him waiting on that fuel. Had that pit stop done, waiting on the fuel. Need that fuel to get to this next stop. Make it to the end of this race. That's where you tell the pit crew, hey, just get the lugs tight, take your time, because we'll be waiting on fuel. The fuel guy on races like this and super speedways, a lot of times, is the most important guy. Woohoo! Did you see Almendinger holding yes. on to that thing? Yeah, these tires are at the end of their life on these front runners. Uh, Corey LaJoy is dragging his diffuser, so he is being posted to come to pit road. Gunther, don't you own that company? <laughs> Boy, they'll be on the phone <laughs> Monday morning. You Sounds like they called me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Give him a deal. <laughs> so uh, Kyle Busch uh, pitted on lap 20. Randall Burnett, his crew chief, told him his right front tire probably would not have made another lap. Interesting. It's probably over cambered. Uh, it'd be on the inside edge, uh, and it, that's that's interesting. I mean, uh, we wouldn't have thought that we would have heard about that. 
and then usually these tires just they just go when there's an issue. So that, the beginning of a race though is usually the most abrasive on the tires, and so hopefully we won't hear about that problem later. And that was only 12 green flag laps, uh, Larry tells me. So, ah, maybe it was a, a flat spot. I don't know. Cindric on pit road. That's one of our leaders. One of the six that have not yet pitted, Austin Cindric. And the leading Ford in the race comes to pit road. 22 taking 23, right on top of that number. Jamie. Alex Bowman in his pit box. He's been pretty happy. Top three lap times here. The pace has been good. Remember Greg Ives, his former crew chief, on the box. Austin Cindric always so good on these road courses. Right now he's a little bit too tight with the car to get to the cars in front of him, though. Wants an adjustment for that in the middle of the corner. So that leaves only three drivers on course that have not yet made a pit stop. Your first three, Byron Almendinger and Suarez. Takes about 45 seconds to come down pit road, get four tires, and exit here. Looks like a pretty slow pit stop on Cindric there. Looks like he had a lot of trouble on the right rear. And those top three are all Chevys, so it looks like their fuel has given them the, the most generous options when it's going to get down to the end of this. Now Chevrolet made an announcement this week that this sixth generation of Camaro will sunset after the 2024 model year and that no immediate replacement is planned. However, Vice President of Motorsports Jim Campbell said don't worry about that. Chevrolet is committed to NASCAR. We're going to be here for a long time. But uh, the Camaro nameplate, well, get you one now or next year because after that, it's going away. Well, look on that ticker. You see 45, Tyler Reddick. He will assume this lead. I would, I would anticipate Byron and Almendinger Suarez pitting. Did a great job getting up through the field, not tearing that car up. And here he is. Got to yeah. assume the lead again. Yeah, so he's only eight seconds off. And then the full exchange on pit road, when the 24 commits to the pit right, entry lane, this time. and by the time he gets to the exit, if the smooth pit stop happens, he'll lose 45 seconds. So 45 seconds back is where he'll end up blending back in. That would put him back about 25th or 6th, uh, but still on the lead lap at the worst. And here they're all in, all three. First pit stop of the day for William Byron, who has led now 17 laps. Yeah, so far so good for them. We'll go down to pit road. 40 miles an hour. Doesn't look very fast, Regan. Well, William Byron's been managing the tires and managing the fuel this entire run. No complaints on the race car, said he loves where the car's at. And you see A.J. Allmendinger in the 16 car behind him. The plan is to throw a radio into A.J. so if they get a yellow flag, he can try and hook it up and hear the race. And William Byron leads them out of the pits as we look at our race off pit road, sponsored by Ram. And there's the eight car. So that's that uh, push, push, push on the eight. You know, he got tires a little sooner. Will he be able to clear Suarez? Well, statistically, we're seeing new tires worth about six tenths of a second per lap over the worn ones that just came off. Tyler Reddick is back out front in Austin, Texas.
Working lap 25. Kyle Reddick leading Austin Little, and that brings us to the Coca-Cola Racing Family update with Dylan in second. Uh, Joey Logano after speed uh, one pass through penalty for cutting the S's in 10th. Hamlin 11th, same penalty, and Daniel Suarez just made his pit stop. Um, so he is 18th. Corey LaJoy uh, being posted to come to pit road, dragging the diffuser. He's had a tough day. Yes, he has. This guy here, though, he's finding his groove. He's leading by four seconds, and we've only got a few laps left in this stage. That was probably their agenda, was give up stage one, and that way you can grab points in stage two. A road course ringers, after everybody has now made one pit stop, Kimi Raikkonen in the uh, number 91. He is 13th. Jordan Taylor just made a pit stop, 27th. Uh, Jensen Button was in the top 20s, falling to 31st to Connor Daly, a 36th. I like that. That's impressive for Kimi. You know, he's got that one start up at Watkins Glen last summer. Now he's Jensen, flying. Same thing. Just, I, I think patience. You know, you come in at something new like this. You knew, watched this before. You knew these restarts are going to be wild. Surviving a storm. Yep. Raikkonen is the last Ferrari driving world champion. And he got his last Formula One win right here at Coda. I like that. And look at that stud. He's got the sunglasses on in his character. Nobody else got to wear their sunglasses. I mean, is that an Iceman thing? It's an evolution. <laughs> <laughs> to wear sunglasses at night like Kim, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I like that. <laughs> Larry Mack, let's talk fuel strategy here. With the tire fall off being less than a second, is that maybe what led teams to a two-stop rather than a three-stop strategy? Mike, that, that's what I'm thinking, because right now, when I look at the top 14 drivers, including Tyler Reddick and this 45 that's leading right now, yeah, he's probably going to get those 10, 10 stage points here in a little over three laps. He's going to get that playoff point. But they stop so early, they have to make two more trips to pit road. But from William Byron on down, everybody that pitted lap 20 or later, they only have to make one more pit stop. The tire degradation, the tire fall off is just not as great as we thought it was going to be. Okay. Let's sit for more on tires, here's Jamie. Well, Mike, we have a new tire this year. It's grippier. Last year, didn't see much wear at all. This time, we are seeing wear. This came off of Jordan Taylor's car after 22 laps. The delaminating, it's almost like a chunking. This is the right rear. Same thing here with the left front. Now, we heard we could expect some of that. They saw it a little bit in practice, but certainly something to keep in mind moving forward. Sure, remember, uh, Jordan had an early brake lockup. Uh, slid into another car there, so that might have been a uh, contributing factor there. Well, Chase, if you were on the horn of Jordan right now, what would you be telling him? Well, I think he's doing a good job. I mean, he's got the car clean, right? Not having any damage through this point in the race is a big is a big deal, and he's got to get to the end in order to have a good finish. So I think he's doing a good job, and, and at these road courses, sometimes you just have to let this strategy play out and get closer to the end of the race to really understand what it's going to kind of look like. And, and I think you're at this, it, you know, the stage where you got a lot of different stuff going on and, and we need to just kind of see where it plays out when, when everybody gets closer to the end. All right, Kurt's going to take us for a little tap dancing here with uh, Tyler Reddick. Yeah, I love the foot camera and it helps really give you a perspective of how much he's on the brakes coming down to here into 11, pushing hard and blipping the throttle to match the downshifts on the revs. And then he'll ease into the throttle. Ease into it and go full, grabbing gears down the long back straightaway. Real quick blips. I mean, we're now graded on how quick we get our shifts done. But here we go, Boyer, this, take us down into this 12. This will be interesting if he pumps that pedal. Pumps that brake pedal. I want to make sure. There it is. Just a little bit of feel. Want to make sure that pedal's there. It's not a good feeling when you go off in that corner 175 mile an hour. That pedal goes to the floor. I did All right, Gunter, you're laughing at that. Why? At that little uh, confidence hit. At Clint are laughing because he knows that uh, he would do the same because he's scared that you have no brake in that in that <laughs> thing. You know that is why I'm laughing. I'm not laughing. Yes. I think all the drivers, as, last, uh, as much as they are tough guys, I mean, going in there at that speed, you want to make sure your brake is there when you get there. Yes. And then watch the throttle through this long carousel, nice and easy, all the way through, nice and smooth, and then boom. Yeah, check that out. The heart rate, Boyer's all over this. That's a. That's beating pretty good there. That's a lot of beating. You think he's working hard? Hot in this car, too. 
look at last week with sustained high speed laps. Compared to today. It's working hard. The road courses do that. Road courses to me were always one of the toughest. And in Martinsville, like that place would always wear me out as well. It's just because you're up on the wheel and throttle, brake, steering all day long. Lap again, let him know. But I'd say right now, Reddick's in his groove. They're going to grab these stage points. And then they probably, I mean, we'll ask Larry Mack. I mean, they're probably going to run this out as far as they can go on gas and then see where they end up coming out. You heard him talk about it at 44, 45 lap. Well, back to the Ovals next week at Richmond on FS1. And then in two weeks, the NASCAR Cup Series heads to the dirt track at Bristol for some bumper to bumper mud slinging action sponsored by Coyote Tractors. Easter Sunday evening only on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Tickets available for the Bristol Dirt Race. You can get yours now at BristolMotorSpeedway.com. So right now, every driver in the top 12 on your scoring pylon stopped between lap 11 and lap 14. Uh, so did Raikkonen and Keselowski. Byron is the first of those that sp uh, stopped in the most recent sequence of lap 20 to 24. Yeah, this is what's all new with the strategy on, on how things are going to get spread out for a little bit, but things will come back together like an accordion. Well, that 24 card, he is on the two tire stop, right? He is going to be the Reddick. You're watching Reddick in the lead. You know, he's clear out here, but he pitted so much earlier on lap 13 that he is going to have to pit somewhere around probably 38. 36 to uh, to make it to the end and oh by the way that's not going to get him to the end he's going to need some cautions without a caution that 24 car is in the catbird seat that's what makes this interesting that's why you move and take away stage breaks and and, and the, the things that they've done to try to make this interesting so mike kurt clint gunther i've been doing the math so tyler reddick pitted on lap 13 if he goes to the max side of fuel number 24 to your point Clint that takes him to lap 37 if he does that again 24 more laps it takes him to lap 61 that's six to seven laps short of the checkered flag that's going to take a lot of saving and a lot of cautions that's not going to get it nope. you're going to need cautions I don't think you're going to save on this track this big 20 turns way too long around here going to need some help I agree with you. He's going to need some help. I mean, he, he had a four second lead a little bit earlier. Now it's a seven second lead. Can you start to back it off? I don't really think you're going to gain that much fuel by dropping your pace, but he does have a big cushion. Final lap of stage two. Again, no stage breaks, just the stage end and the points awarded. The race rolls on. Redick ahead of Austin Dillon, Michael McDowell, Harvick, who was the first car to stop uh, today on lap 11. And Busher. It's a cool feeling being that far out in front, man. We hadn't seen that in a long time. On somebody that's in their rhythm, in their groove, and on a different strategy. I think that's just it. I mean, you look down, a Dylan and McDowell, the only other two. That 45 car was pretty much lights out to the competition all week long. 170 miles an hour, down to about 45. Right there for Reddick, completing stage two here and going to pick up his first stage win of the season. Yeah, if we ride along with him and just listen, that's a full shift. That was not a short shift. So he's second gear through here. And when you go to do some shifts and downshifts, you can start to gather a little bit of fuel, but ah, seven laps is going to be tough. And out there, he's got clean air. Which is good as well, you know, he can do his own race in the moment, but then the only thing is fuel. Yeah, right now the, the 45 team is, is racing the racetrack, racing their gas tank. This is the stage in. Still keep going, doing good. Nice. So Tyler Reddick wins stage two, seven and a half seconds in front of Austin Dillon. Michael McDowell, Kevin Harvick, Chris Busher. Uh, the top five at the end of stage two.
all the drivers on a three stop strategy coming in here at lap 32. Austin Dillon, who was running second the first car in, and Kevin Harvick, who led the first parade into the pits at lap 11, uh, right behind him. Kyle Larson among those. With one more stop in the offing for them, and you see things are pretty well strung out. Oops, Kyle Larson too fast entering, and Ty Dillon has been given a penalty drive through penalty for uh, or excuse me Ty Gibbs for shortcutting the S's Ty Gibbs Justin Haley the Celsius cam giving us these shots he's in 22nd and 33 drivers on the lead lap. I'm telling you Gunther. Two tire stop wins this baby without a caution. The way this race is spreading out. My man Byron's stop. looking good. Two stop strategy. Two stop. Two, two. You know what I meant. Yeah, I know what you meant. I, I think we're here <laughs> in the 45 might pit, and it's due to the lead that they have. If they do the full cycle, they might come back out within the group that pitted earlier. So they're they're looking to um, change up the strategy a little bit due, due to the pace. Here they are. They are on pit road. So you see upper left uh, where the 24 is coming around to try to overhaul the 45. Oh, he'll for sure overtake him. Uh, it's just a matter of where he blends back in. But let's go down to Regan. Well, Tyler Reddick, the first run of the race was primarily loose everywhere. Little adjustment on the car. This time he's only loose through the carousel. Pretty happy from the driver's seat. Clean pit stop, didn't have to wait on fuel because they're not into the stretching on the fuel side. So be interesting to see where, where he plays out. There's your leader, 24. Or well, will, will be once it's cycled. He will be, around. yes, because Busher and Jones came in at lap 11 and 13, respectively. They will have to stop. And he blended in a spot where there's not a lot of traffic. So that, that's actually pretty good. If he would have had like three or four guys sweating him, uh, that he would have lost more time on the exchange. So Chris Busher is your leader. He was on pit road at lap 11. Busher, Eric Jones, and Joey Logano are the three stop cars uh, that have yet to make their second stop, along with Haley and Burton, who are further back. Right now, it's all clear sailing, right? Everybody's a bit spread out. Uh, the, the chance for a yellow is, is at a minimum. I mean, there's always something that could happen. But these are when, when you first pit, <laughs> if you're feeling lucky and everything's going your way, you end up with a yellow right after you pit. Byron pulls out of the draft on uh, Jones, who may be pitting this time. Jamie. Yeah, listening to the radio for Eric Jones. He's just had a great weekend, Mike. Great qualifying effort of eighth yesterday. Went to the Skip Barber School here at Coda. Been putting a lot of effort into his road coursing skills, trying to get better. He's been pretty happy with the car. Now we could follow William Byron, learn a little bit more here, but Eric Jones shown in the third spot on the two stop strategy. Richard Petty, Dale Inman looking on. King won seven championships in that 43 and 200 race victories, including a lot on the road courses at uh, Riverside, California. All right, Busher is in. That will hand the lead over to William Byron. Here's Jamie. And Chris Busher drives down pit lane for his second stop of the day. Here's a driver who's sneaky good on the road course and finished top 10 in the last five straight, including a second at Sonoma. You see Eric Jones on the right side in as well. Four tires and fuel for him. So that leaves only Joey Logano of the three stoppers uh, who has not been to pit road. Justin Haley and Harrison Burton. Uh, what you're seeing is the, the usual suspects starting to pop back up here. And I, I like what I'm seeing, though, out of the 45. They, they aborted on that, on that sequence. And now 
they find themselves six seconds back, I think that's actually minimizing the damage of what could have happened if they were going to go long. So William Byron back to the lead. He led 16 laps previously today. William Byron leading A.J. Allmendinger by 1.6 seconds. Daniel Suarez third. Tyler Reddick fourth. Just ran his personal fastest lap of the race. And last year's winner, Ross Chastain, fifth. Saturday on Fox, baseball's back. The Giants battle the reigning American League MVP Aaron Judge and the Yankees. Or you'll see the Phillies take on the Rangers. It all begins Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. Ty Gibbs cutting the S's. He'll make another drive through penalty. His car has dropped a cylinder. And Harrison Burton, no first gear in the 21. Got a nice little battle here with Truex and Bell. We've got Cindric in the mix. And all these guys are on the same strategy. They all pitted within a lap of each other. Uh, just 20 seconds off of Byron's lead pace right now. I, I don't want to brag. I don't want to say anything crazy here. I'm, I'm watching the lap times. I mean, Tyler Reddick just busted off the fastest lap of his race on lap 34, and he's only four seconds back of the lead. He just now passed Suarez. That car is on fire. Not literally, but just in fuego. It's it's hauling the mail. It's going really fast. Yeah, four seconds back, and he's catching him over what? Almost two seconds faster. He's catching him very fast. Wicked fast lap time. Wicked fast. So look at the dirt on that corner. You know what? If, it, if a restart does happen, they better clean it up. So one thing he's not doing is putting a dent in that six laps of fuel he needs to save, uh, which, I mean, that's an impossibility, right? I mean, right now, I think he's they, doing it like, with his we, race car. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Chase and I were talking about it a little bit off the air. I mean, Chase, I think what they did is they just said, man, our strategy is so far out there. We've got to abort and get back into the, the normal range. What do you think, Chase? I, I would agree. And I think probably the biggest thing that's saving him is his pace, right? So he's in a position right now where he's outpacing these guys. And even though they messed up on the strategy, they kind of got baited into pitting early because of those early cautions. Now that it's strung out, they realize they were in a lot of trouble and his pace is saving him. He's fast enough. He got that lead. He wasn't thinking about saving fuel. He's thinking about getting a big enough gap so that when they stop that 40 seconds or so that you mentioned, he was going to fall back in line closer to the lead on the back end of the stop end. So now they're back in good shape and he's close enough to him now where heck, he might catch him outright with that pace he's showing currently. Yeah, we talked about it. You know, it's lap 36. It's going to we think the number is somewhere around 44, 45 with the pace he has. They made a mistake, if you will. They changed, you know, chanced it on a different strategy. Didn't work out, but he's so fast, it's not going to matter. He's right back into that conversation on that same lap. Now, one driver who did not change his game plan was Joey Logano. They stopped at lap 11, and Logano is still out there. He's in eighth place, but he's the only driver uh, on the lead lap who has not made his second stop. He just goes by again, so uh, he's going to run it more than 24 laps on this tank. It's a long stretch on fuel. That's uh, that's. I guess they're just trying to jump in that bed. And that's, that's the bed they're laying in now. Chase, talk to me about attrition. Not having those stage breaks, right? The caution coming out, taking that breather as a driver. Pretty hot out here. Workload through the roof on this long track. No, I think you're spot on, and I think it's relevant today too. I mean, this is probably the hottest day that they've had throughout the season. Obviously, I haven't been at the last couple or whatever, but it looks like and, and seems like this has been the hottest weekend. William talked about it in our, in our post-practice debrief yesterday, so I know it's been on their minds. And not to mention, Byron and Almendinger both ran that race yesterday, so you know they were smoked after running those last 20 laps 110%. Um, so definitely on their minds and, and still a long ways to go, too. Big pass right there as Reddick goes by Almendinger. And up into second place. I think Almendinger, oh, I know he did. He just let him go right there. That car's getting that big in the mirror that quick. Have at it. Yeah, that's a little bit of etiquette, I think we just found. <laughs> but yeah, when a car catches you that fast, it's just like, you know what, buddy, you go on ahead. Especially at this point in the race. Race this racetrack, race the strategy. Win the battles you need to win. Yes. And that wasn't one of them, right? Yeah. Not yet. Pay window. You hear me say it every weekend. That old window is not open yet, Gunther. <laughs> Clint, you're going to lose your money. There are two players still alive in our Super 6 contest for $10,000. Yes. I think there's probably still at least one question still to be decided. That's a race fan. Yep. I'm telling you right now, if you had all those picks right in the wild start of this race and you were still in it to win it, hats off to you. Come and get my money. I like it. Jamie. Well, you guys mentioned Joey Logano and how he has not pitted since lap 11. I talked to Paul Wolf, his crew chief, and he said this weekend, the road course stuff in general, they're just off a little bit. Don't have that raw speed that they really feel they needed to contend for a win. Thought maybe a fifth to tenth place car, so they're mixing that up with strategy here. And Joey, of course, right now, those old tires, he just wants some adjustments. Drive off, not very good, a little too tight in the 22. So staying with the plan, Larry says they could probably go one more lap uh, before they absolutely need fuel. William Byron out front of all the top six. Only one of them has never had a top five finish on a road course. And that's Byron. Say what? Yeah, uh, he's the only driver in the top six without a road course victory. Or a top five. Top five. OK, wow. I, I wouldn't have guessed that. I would have thought he would have that box checked already. Right. But the again, year he's having, oh. that's going to be short lived. That's yeah. that. That's for sure. Uh oh, Christopher Bell. All this talk about strategy. Now you see the blue flag waving. That is an advisory flag. There is something ahead you need to be aware of. You don't have to slow down. You don't have to stay in line. It's just a, it's an advisory flag for the drivers. Trouble ahead. In that case, it was the 20 around. Very close. Ryan Priest and. Larry said the track looked dirty in that area, and that may be why he spun. 
Here's a look. It was. I mentioned it earlier. Everybody goes through that dirt. Car in front of yep. him nailed it. Look how low McDowell was behind him all the way down in it. Yep. If a restart does happen, they better get the outside of that corner cleaned up. There was a bottom out. You hear us talking about those rub blocks. Look at the dirt flying. Yeah, that's turn eight. You can drop your right sides off. And then it looked like Seabell missed the corner by maybe a tire width, which put his outside tires in a lot of the uh, the fuzz that's been kicked up. So here we go. Here's Reddick. Unbelievable. The pace that he has. Just think how fast or how far ahead he would have been if he had been on a on a uh, two strategy call there, two stop strategy. Let's see. To the inside for the lead. Not much you can do to defend that. Just dive spot. Clear. Clear, you are the leader. He had this speed in practice. The question was, you know, that upfront speed that he showed in practice, was it gonna live? And I would have told you, Gunther, there's no chance he could have kept that pace up. Boy, he proved me wrong in this race. I think he proved us all wrong, you know. I mean, it's so amazing, the, the pace he has got. I mean, you know, with the pit stops, I mean, he's just like got it all back. Can you imagine with the two-stop strategy for the race, where he would be now, he would be going to lap some people. So Joey Logano, you saw, just made uh, his second stop of the day. He will need one more. 30 laps to go in the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix at Circuit of the Americas. Tyler Reddick has retaken the lead from William Byron. You're watching Tyler Reddick lead William Byron by 1.4 seconds from our Goodyear aerial coverage. Powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. 29 laps to go here in Austin, Texas. In just three weeks, real football for real fans is back. The USFL season opening kickoff weekend starts the new season April 15th and 16th on Fox, NBC, and FS1. There's Daniel Suarez, three seconds back of the lead, and A.J. Allmendinger. 
uh, three and a half back third and fourth. Ross Chastain is fifth. Lap 40 here, still plan C. Next up's the 24. Let's go. <laughs> plan C. That plan C is without a doubt, Billy Scott is going to do exactly what those other guys are going to do. And I'm going to tell you, whenever they pit, when they say they're going to pit, I want to be on that sequence. I do not want to get off a sequence with the guys I'm racing against that I'm way faster than, oh, by the way. This whole idea of running the race backwards, finding out how much fuel you need to get to the end, making that your last stop, and starting with the finish lap and backing up the race is widely credited to engineer Bob Cuneo, uh, builder of winning modifieds, Paul Newman's Dotsons, the Bodine bobsleds, and he was the lead engineer for Jeff Bodine in the Cup Series and developed this way of running road courses from the last lap backwards to the first and planning your pit stops that way. You'll have that up here, Gunther. Did you know that? I did not know that. No, I'm getting, I'm so impressed. I'm getting uh, so much history lessons from uh, um, Mike this weekend. You know, I'm, I'm going away like, uh, you know, just enlightened. Well, then let's get current with Larry Mack. <laughs> Mike, I was crew chief, obviously, that day. Paul Andrews was the crew chief for Jeffrey Bodine. And when we saw what they were doing, we had no idea what they were doing. In fact, we wondered, what the hell are they doing? But it worked out. He went to victory lane. Sure did. Denny Hamlin's going to have a hard time getting to victory lane today. Uh, 17th at the time of that spin. Yeah, that was the same corner. This is uh, turn eight where everybody kicks up the dust. And if you're offline a little bit, you're out there in the fuzz. Fuzz got him. I mean, the popo are in the in the chicane and the S's, right? Yeah. That, that fuzz is just dirt. You know, their <laughs> ability to get down below those uh, rumble strips and just keep dipping farther and farther into that dirt. Uh, so many times, you know, Sonoma, when you everybody getting into one and up the hill there, dipping their left side. Oh, Caution. my gosh. <laughs> Turn nine debris has brought out the third caution of the day. There's the dirt. Well, that's where, yeah, Denny Hamlin came back on track in turn nine. But yeah, that's. I don't like it. Run my strategy conversation up. These guys are needing a breather. But dang it, they caused it. <laughs> they were in the dirt. <laughs> and what happens is just so many green flag laps, so many cars going through the dirt in turn eight, the, the whole place was turning into soup over there. Look at that. I mean, if that, you miss your line and don't get down, yep. you said it, Kurt. You nailed it, too. And Denny, he was just a little bit high above those rumble strips, got those left side tires in it. What do you think, Chase? Did you like it? Oh, me. I don't know what to think about that. If I'm Tyler Reddick, I certainly don't like that at all. I've been in that, uh, in that position. But... Yeah, I mean, obviously, to your point, they need to get it cleaned off now because those cars are going to have to be too wide going through that corner. So as long as they get it cleaned off. But, yeah, if I'm Tyler, I'm probably not too happy. And they will. They're going to send uh, the jet dryer out and blow that corner of the track. And we remind you again, there are no track limits here except in the S's. You want to shortcut that corner, kick up a little dirt like the guys used to do at Riverside, California? Well, you go right ahead, but here's the result. Look how much dirt is. Oh, don't look at him. Look at that <laughs> dirt that was kicked up in that corner. It was getting pretty bad. Well, he's going to need some fancy fit work, uh, footwork there because this is one of the narrowest pit roads in NASCAR. And if they all come, we have 33 cars on the lead lap. Oh, this pit road is about to be as busy as a McDonald's drive through I mean, everybody's going to be down there. But look at this. There's 27 to go, and you can go 24 on a tank of gas, right? Well, but caution laps will caution save you will fuel. Help. But so you need some for the green-white checkers if that comes out for overtime. Larry's calculator's burning up, I can tell. Yep. Depends on how long I it gotta takes live to clean in the that moment. up. Let's pit four tires, pack it full of fuel. Live in the moment right now. I agree takes with that. Takes the heat off the crew chief, and the, the pressure's on the pit crews now. Well, for the third time today, the Toyota Camry TRD, all new this year, gets a chance to pace the field. Remember, no stage breaks on the road courses this year. And the strategy we've seen today has been very interesting, especially with Tyler Reddick uh, starting out with one strategy, and now it appears flipping to another. But, Larry, I guess this stop will just put everybody in the same bucket. 
It, it, it does, Mike. And, and again, to Kurt's point, we're a little bit shy of the fuel window, but they're probably going to run one or two more caution laps. So, yeah, just make sure we are mistake free, pack it full of fuel. When we were looking at, I need to save you, you need to save me six laps, no can do. Save me a lap, now nah, we're talking. I can, might be able to do that inside this race car. And isn't what you guys taught me when I watched the broadcast a lot, it's a uh, cautions, breed, <laughs> oh. cautions. Isn't that a hot thing going on? A little early for that. Is it too soon? A little early. Wait too for the restart to and hit us with that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's out. There is no way that's the last caution in my opinion. Here are the pit crews and they're ranked this season for pit road performance. The environs on that list. Larry, uh, we know you need fuel. What about tires, two or four? Uh, you know what? I got fired after Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's pretty simple here. Four. Okay. If you leave before I get all four on there, I'm coming back out there and get you. Ow, I'm feeling that burn from inside here. You fired yeah. yourself. You, you didn't get fired. You fired yourself. And you yourself. know what? I should have. <laughs> Gunther would have fired me on Monday. <laughs> that was so funny. Might not have taken till Monday. <laughs> Empty seat on the plane going home. You know, with Reddick pitting and, and pitting later, he's going to be able to, here's another tidbit, probably going to be able to take less fuel and get out even faster, helping that stop where everybody else has to wait on, on that max fuel. That's going to be something that's interesting to watch here as well. Whoa. Larry, would anybody stay out? Pace car. We've been watching Joey Logano. Remember, he yes. pitted lap 38. The minute the caution came out, he started saving fuel. We've been watching yeah. his throttle trace. And there he goes. You're right. Jamie. Alex Bowman in the 48, been running top 10 all day long. Remember, he finished second here a year ago. Four tires, they told him twice, wait on fuel, wait on fuel. There goes the second can there, Regan. Tyler Reddick, he has been getting better as the day goes on. Needed lateral grip. The adjustments have been good. Just a little bit more in a water bottle as it's extremely hot out here right now. The 99 of Daniel Suarez, a great run in third place. Car was tight earlier. It's too free for him right now, sliding the back just a bit. And the 24 of William Byron, that run the first time he started losing forward drive. Tyler Reddick beats the field out of the pits. Here's your race off pit road sponsored Almond by Ram. Almendinger had trouble, lost a lot of spots back there. So as the field forms up out of the pits, we'll take you Fox side by side. 26 laps to go.
26 laps to go at Circuit of the Americas. Time for our Credit One Bank ones to watch. Clint, who you got? Almendinger all the way. Came in third, 15th now. Had a bad pit stop. If anybody can do it, AJ can. I'm going to go with Reddick. He's, uh, he's going to be the rabbit once he clears these couple front runners. I go with Logano. He's on a different strategy, and you never know if it comes to him. Yeah, I'm looking at William in the 24. I think that he's in a position now. He's on equal tires with the 45. He hasn't been that way in quite some time. Uh, hopefully, he can have a little extra pace. Well, I'm looking at the track house cars. Uh, Suarez and Chastain won two of the road races here last year. See what they've got in this final run to the checkered flag. 26 to go, and those are your Credit One Bank ones to watch. I suppose with seniority, you get to pick two yeah. cars. Is that, was that what just happened? Picked here? a whole organization there, Mike. <laughs> I thought we had to pick one. Who, who, did, who died and left you, boss? <laughs> I, I just gave you respect with the seniority. It's all good. It's all good. All right, they'll come to the Geico restart zone. Oh, my. That's Harrison Burton up front. Now, he is in second. He has no first gear, uh, we're told. And here they come. Logano, Burton, Reddick. Cody Ware up there, William Byron, Suarez Chastain, and they're on it. And here we go. Oh, yeah. oh boy. Whoa. Look at this. All the way down to pit lane on the inside. Lock him up. Oh, the 45 overshot turn one. No. Six no. wide. Right. Great move. He was Bold just smart. Move. Smart, staying out of it, going wide. Interesting. Wow, that is such a cool view. You know, and that's exactly what Logano couldn't afford to do. He needed to come off of turn one in that lead and didn't. That was Brian Campy up on the box for William Byron. Former IndyCar champion winning lead engineer. I like your pick, Mike. Chastain, new life for him. Woo. Oh, Reddick sends it. He loves those braking zones. That's got to be where the lap time and the majority of the lap time is coming from, is all these braking zones into 1, 11, and 12. So in qualifying, the difference that I saw between Byron and Reddick, Byron won the pole, and his Chevy seemed to have more speed down the straightaways. Reddick would eat him up in the braking zones. All right, well, that wow. Tell you who didn't, Suarez. Big time dive bomb, couldn't get it slowed down, shot off the racetrack. But this is again the, the who's who of the road racing group. I mean, Byron, I would have thought he had a top five and a win by now, but we've got Reddick, we've got Chastain, Bowman, Suarez, and Dylan's always a little sneaky. And then Bell won the Roval last year. I mean, this is the, the normal, the usual suspects. You see Almendinger on the inside there trying to dig out of that hole. Yeah, he's got his work cut out for him for sure. Thirty four cars on the lead lap coming to twenty four to go. I would have thought we'd seen more rooting and gouging and throwing fenders and slamming doors, but it was fairly civilized again on that restart. There's still a long way to go. I mean, you see 24 up there, but that's that's with 3.41 miles attached to 24 laps. So here's the replay, and, and I would have thought Reddick, with that Monster Energy Claw to the inside, would have just cut, turned, and left. But he missed the corner. Yeah, just too deep. Yeah, he flat out deep, handed yeah. the lead back to those guys. And they were six wide in the back. Wow. So we've got some radio chatter from earlier. Uh, drivers and spotters talking about restarts from one of the earlier cautions. Uh, we'll begin with spotter uh, Stevie Reeves. Yeah, well, we're in the middle of like four wide right there. They're all coming up the hill. We only see the roof, so, so that'll help me. Yeah, that particular restart, he actually had clear all the way to the bottom if he wanted to. But I know you can't tell from them driving up the hill at you. 
That was from Jordan Taylor earlier in the race, and it was spot on for what we saw right off the bat. Trying to be patient, take care of that car, because he knew it was fast. Aggression's the name of the game of these boys. They don't play. Sixth place here. Suarez and Bell, who went to victory lane the last time we were on a road course at the Charlotte Roval. Xfinity fastest lap of the race. Uh, we mentioned it when it happened. Tyler Reddick, 92 and a half miles per hour average. Todd Gilliland firing off on uh, fresh tires, 92.3. Byron Bush Suarez. Man, I don't know if he's going to have enough, Kurt. Byron run a 213.71, Reddick 213.11. So fast in that 45 car. You know what happened with that last run was that the 45, when they aborted the whole situation, they might not have been totally full on fuel. We know now that they had to pack it full of fuel, and the balance might have changed here on the short run. But these are the two guys that sat on the front row. These are the two guys that have been setting the pace. We've now got the two fastest cars running one two with a long way to go. This this is going to be a sword fight. It's going to be a gunfight. It's going to be a knife fight. But it's a matter of when do you pull out those little weapons to, uh, to get the advantage or you just do it right now. Chase when did oh here goes <laughs> right to the inside like you said right now and crossing right over is Byron. Perfect crossover. They're now going to be side by side down this whole straightaway and it's like who's going to outbreak whom and I think. The and 45 is going to try to stick it on the outside here because he'll have the inside for turn 13. Took the words out of my mouth. That's what I was going to say there. Not only do you have to outbreak him, strategizing who has a track position oh, for line on the exit. He and let him go. An opportunity for Chastain to close there. Not sure he quite made the most of it, but Ooh, see those two cars are hitting side by side. Yep, there's the one. Side. He likes this. Reddick loves to be on the inside there. And now you're going to cross back under. Sure as heck did. Over. I love that section of the racetrack. <laughs> Look at this. Now what? they're back side by side, the opposite side, but the 45 will have the inside all the way through the carousel. Four different opportunities in a row to cross each other back over. Can he shake him? Order. He didn't shake him. I'm with him here. He now Byron's got the advantage. That's good racing. And they are racing each other with a lot of respect right now. <laughs> Can the 45 cross back under? Gonna try. And he's not gonna quite get there. Chase, what do you think? Is it a little too soon for this kind of uh, kind of back and forth, or you just take it where you can get it? No, I definitely don't think it's too soon, and for a couple of reasons. You know, one, as you see Tyler trying to get back to the inside of William, but again, he's gonna be in a bad spot for coming back down the hill. But I think you want control of the race because the longer you're running behind somebody, the, the hotter your tires are get, and you're making it harder for you to make that pass later on down the road. So I think you want to get it done while you can, and I think that's why you see Tyler pushing so hard to do it. But it is, it is interesting watching him exit 11 and coming on the front straightaway. That guy on the inside is at such a disadvantage because of the grip that the paint has, um, and those guys want to get out there to that paint to help them get down those straightaways. All right, here's that turn eight, nine. Reddick's there. 10 is the fastest corner on the track right here and down into 11. You're spot on, though, Kurt. This Reddick is so much faster under braking. This end of the racetrack, he's just so hard to keep behind you. Hey, boys, three-horse race now. I mean, Chastain was right there at the corner. Didn't get as good a launch off uh, of turn 11, but uh, if, if these guys keep running side by side it'll be a three car race watch how much better he can get in the corner than William it's been that way all day long and now can he close the door can he shove him off into the white paint area yes yes now if you, you got to protect him if you get hit from behind you got to be ready for the hit from behind this is a tough section to run away from somebody such slow corners it's easy for somebody to come back and, and bump you from behind What's Reddick's heartbeat now? How about 184? 
He is pumping. Wow. I think he might have finally found just enough wiggle room to try to break away. Look at come right back down after we got that lead. Whew, I feel better. And now Byron's under pressure from Chastain. So now Byron's got to look in the mirror and try to still chase down Reddick and hit his marks. Let's see if Chastain's as clean as the way the other two raced. <laughs> Behind Chastain is Alex Bowman with a little unfinished business with Chastain from last year's finish here. Exactly right. But that shows you again Bowman putting himself in position. I mean, he's always there. He's like that stealthy guy that always shows up at the end of these races. Among our road course ringers, Jordan Taylor's worked his way back up into the top 20. Jensen Button, 27th. Kimi Raikkonen is 29th. Connor Daly, 36th. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express card. 20 laps to go. There's Tyler Reddick leading William Byron by seven tenths of a second. Ross Chastain, Alex Bowman right there in the picture. Austin Dillon is fifth. Well, Chase, your horse is keeping pace with Reddick out front. You think Reddick's saving? I don't see how he's saving. I mean, I think that's way too close. Maybe if he had five, ten car lengths, but I mean, we just watched him during the break there. He was covering turn one on the braking uh, zone. So I don't think so. I do think what we talked about earlier, though, with, with him running behind William for so long, I feel like that did hurt his tire. So it's like broke. Kyle has a toe link broke. Yep. This is going to be interesting if he can get it around there. I'm in right side. He should be able to. That's a tough, tough break again. Might have been from that hit earlier. Finally, just the, the team wore out. Of it. A tough day for Kyle. Fast race car. 
That taken out by uh, Bubba Wallace getting into turn 12. Should be able to, to limp that around. Uh, he's only a couple corners away from pit entry. As long as he can get to pit road, we can save a caution here. Uh, Ryan Priest's day just came undone. He got penalized for shortcutting the S's. And on his pass down pit road, he was speeding. So he'll be back. Our Jensen Button in 27. Haley with the Celsius cam giving you these views as they battle for 27. And uh, Kyle Larson has made it to pit road. So we will stay green. Look at him slip sliding around. Yeah, those top four have, have separated themselves, but I mean, there's so much racing still to go. I mean, with 19 laps and with tire drop off, I mean, it, it seemed to have stabilized. And the, the pace that we expected for these tires to drop off just never, never showed up. And I don't know if that's from rubber from the Truck Series race, the Xfinity cars out there filling in the track. But man, we expected a completely different type of feel with the tires. So next week, the Cup Series is on FS1. Short track action from Richmond, Virginia. The Toyota Owners 400 begins next Sunday, 3.30 Eastern. Pre-race coverage starts at 2. That's on FS1 on the Fox Sports app. And Larry Mack will be with us in the booth to help break down all of the strategy of short track racing at Richmond. It's a good point, Mike. You know, he's sitting here talking about strategy on a road course. That Richmond race, all about strategy. Be handy and nice to have Larry back in the booth with us. Help us explain that. Regan. Well, Mike, we've talked about the 16 of AJ Allmendinger and how they have had trouble with the radios all day long. And you see going on the pit sign right now, that is going to say two laps short. They believe they're two laps short on fuel. A lot of nerves up and down pit road right now in terms of if they can make it if this race goes green. Well, I'll tell you, Regan, the guy that needs to read that sign is going too fast to read that sign. <laughs> Look at that sign. One says stay out, one says too short. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're gonna have to have that out in front of him pretty yeah. pretty good to be able to see it. I mean, we are at Coda, and it'd be cool to see him hang over that uh, short pit wall like you would see in uh, F1 or MotoGP, but I don't think NASCAR is gonna allow that. They're gonna have to communicate from the pit box side behind the uh, concrete barrier. Well, you say that. Let me see if I can get a hold of Chris Rice on that box. Let's just go to the oh horse. Oh my, the they already have uh, enough radio trouble. Hey, I can handle this. Hey, Chris Rice, it's Porter up in the booth. You got me? Yes, sir, I got you. You got me? Yeah, I do. Tell me what you're doing there. Driver can't hear you? No, nah, he hadn't been able to hear us all day. Um, so we're trying to let him know he's a couple of laps short. We had to pit right there and didn't have a really good stop. And, uh, you know, two laps short, he told us to uh, give him a sign. So we're going to show him a sign back like late model days. Old school. I dig it, man. Fast race car. Anybody can get it to here at the end of this thing on these restarts. You see him getting by another one right there. It's him. Yeah, he's a rock star, man. He does a good job. Hey, we're having this kind of day, but, you know, our cup program is just getting better and better. We only have second year in, so he'll make us better, and we'll get better from this, and we'll be ready for the next uh, road course. So we're just going to keep digging, try to get top ten out of it, and that's what it's all about. Thanks, bud. Almendinger uh, just passing Joey Logano. And moving back into the top 10. Yeah, it shows you how costly, you know, these spots are so hard to come by. Costly pit stop for them. Then the fact on a restart, all right, I got to be aggressive. Well, now I can't even hear my spotters. I don't know if I'm outside of 3, 5, 12. I don't know where I'm at. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, when there's one little thing wrong and then it just starts to snowball. But, you know, Almendinger, he's way cool behind the wheel. He doesn't get upset about anything. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's listen in on the 45 talking fuel. We are one lap short along with the 24. The one looks to be the best in the best shape. So we got to keep the lead, do what we can to save. 
17 to go. Chase, how are you going to save me a lap? Well, with the, with those guys being right right behind, and that's going to be tough. Um, you know, I guess the the question then comes: Do I? I mean, I think I think trying to save it throughout your run is the best thing you can do, just a little bit at a time. Uh, the other option is you run hard and hope for a caution, or you just say, "Hey, look, we're not going to make it. We have to do what we have to do to to go from here." But it's so hard to give up the lead. But I do think now he is managing that that gap, and and I do think he is saving. But saving a lap under green is going to be a tall order. Absolutely. Where I see him doing that, we talked about, Kurt kept pointing it out, the strong, uh, his strong suit getting into the corner. I think he's backing them corners up, idling that thing in there, shifts over there around the carousel, maybe hit third and be a little bit slower in there. Give up in the areas that don't matter the most. 100%. It's tough, but, but good information there from Billy Scott. The 24 is in the same boat you are. So earlier, you know, with 17 to go, that's the best information you can get. So 17 laps remaining in the Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix. And all of you at home have a chance to buy two-time Daytona 500 winner Michael Waltrip's Jeep Wrangler. Just go to echopark.com for details. I, hey, I did a walkthrough with that car, too. Not a scratch on it. Had all the fenders on it. Tires weren't wore out. I couldn't believe that was his car. <laughs> Would you buy his car? No. I don't. You. I was going to ask you, are you going to buy it? You know, you're talking so good about it. I think you need a new uh, a new Jeep. No chance I'm buying buy one a, of his cars. Come on, buy a, buy a Jeep. Maybe. <laughs> All right, Reddick leading William Byron by six tenths of a second, and both trying to save fuel as we go side by side. by Goodyear powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear more driven, showing you the three leaders working their way down here as we're 15 laps from the finish. Saturday on Fox Baseball's back, the Giants battle the Yankees, or you'll see the Phillies take on the Rangers Saturday, 3.30 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. 
Now the one and 99 are saying that they are right on their number. They can make it on fuel. Well, maybe not so the leaders. All right, top four, all saving fuel. Just start getting some earlier lifts in the braking zone. Need a little bit more. Yeah, we're in cam without losing time. Yeah, short shifting helps. Shifting will help where you can without losing time. Just do it where you can't lose time. We are here, buddy. If you do a better job than he does, we'll get him there. Lift and coast. Save your fuel. That's really close on fuel there, William. Just need a tick more. Really close. Hey, Cap, he's doing a really good job in lifting and braking late. I don't know if, if that's enough for you. Uh, William, you can back all the way up to the one car if you need. That's the key. All right. How, you know I'm lifting. I'm lifting early in the corners. That short shifting that I talked about. But I'm managing that gap. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to give you everything I can until he starts pushing me. Trying to manage that gap. Give up in the areas that I know I can give up that will probably save the most fuel. And then over in the S's and stuff like that, if he comes to me a little bit, so be it. But I know if I'm Redick, my strong suit is I can get off in the corner a lot deeper than he can. You got to use your strengths and the strengths of the braking zone for the 45. And like you said, Boyer, through the S's, maybe you can cruise on some of the throttle, but you got to exit turn nine with your authority and get through 10. So that way you can gap yourself and not put yourself in a vulnerable spot to be overtook in a braking zone. But all these guys are in the center. You know what this is reminding me of? Back in the day when we used to run Sonoma, yes. we'd always have this type of race where you had to detune the engine a little bit to save the fuel. And then we would be working the throttle and short shifting to try to make sure that we had that extra fuel for the end. Well, the, the year I won out in Sonoma, Kurt, it was me and you that was battling for it. And that's what I was doing. I was managing over in the S's because I knew they didn't matter. You could get to me, but I had to be good, you know, coming off that last corner 10. This one's the one that's he's going to make it interesting for both of them. He's going to push him hard enough because he's better on fuel. He could run them out of gas. How about Alex Bowman plus 1700 there he's in fifth place he's four and a half back having a great season with only one finish out of the top 10 and he was a contender to win it all here last year let's uh, hear about his fuel situation. We need uh, another 100 feet in one and 12 another 100 feet in one and 12 the 99.60 can make it let him go run out of gas let him know it's still not enough in one he needs to lift her four and one. They have committed fully on that 48. That 48 car was running with the top three. He was right in the same screen, the same picture. He's backed off the most. He's going full conservative, running fifth, but he's going to have the best opportunity with fuel while these top three are pushing each other. That's exactly right. They say there's no chance we're going to run those lap times. We're going to run out of gas. Back this thing up. Let them boys go out there and push each other. Chase, how hard is that to do when they tell you if you can't outrun them, outlast them? Yeah, that's a tough one, and I think I think Clint touched on it. You know, the one is in a position where now that they think that they can make it, he's wanting to push those guys in front of him and, and keep them from saving. Alex was in a position where he didn't necessarily have to worry about that. He was at the back end of the pack, so he knew he was short. They said, hey, we're not going to make it, so now he is full-blown save and, and is going to try to get to the end. So, you know, if you're, if you're Tyler, you don't want to give up the lead. And I think Williams really just pacing himself off of off of him. And, and I think that uh, I think Ross is, is trying to push those guys, but they're still making great pace. So it's really tough to know. Eight different teams in the top 10 here with 13 laps to go. And the race pace has now fallen off to a little slower than two minutes, 15 seconds. How many times have you done that in your career? Until you start saving fuel and you're going faster and we're yelling at you, no, I said save fuel. Like, man, I, I'm rolling in the corners better. I'm in my groove and I've found better pace doing this. I mean, this is a nail biter. This is so difficult to manage a race as a leader and you're trying to save fuel and you're this close to the end. There is so much going on inside the car. Regan? Well, guys, just another thought and possible strategy is also here. The eight car of Kyle Busch was running in 12th at the time, knew that they could not make it. They were going to be short, so they went ahead and split this end of the race in half and basically already made their pit stop under green. He's just going to go as hard as he can for the end of the race and help hope that everybody runs out in front of him. <laughs> Lots of different agendas here. Gunther, you don't have to worry about fuel at all in your race? No, not at all. Uh, we have to worry about it sometimes if you use too much fuel. 
you know, in the end you need to have some fuel left in the fuel tank for the samples, FIA samples, so sometimes you have to, uh, to slow them down a little bit, but otherwise uh, it's more to save tires, you have to save, you know, just that you get to the end uh, for the degradation, but fuel, normally not an issue. You know, one thing that we haven't mentioned, and I, I just, it just dawned on me, is there's SMT, there's live data on steering, throttle, and brake trace, and you can get a live mile per gallon usage per lap. And so if you're at a certain point two, three over, or you need to get it to the other side of the scale, the team can tell you lap by lap. Wow. Let's get an update on Bowman from Jamie. And Alex Bowman fifth right now. The team just told him run 80% wherever you can. We're going to be about a handful of laps short. They also heard that the 99 was good on fuel, so they let him go by. So certainly keeping an eye on Bowman, who seems like they're down at least five laps short right now. Spot on, Jamie. He took off. He went to the whip on that horse off of four and taken off. He's running 213.80s. These leaders are 215.60s. We have some drama developing. Real quick on the Bowman, 80%. That means 80% throttle. That means you're never even going wide open. You're leaving that last 20% closed off so you can save fuel. But yeah, this <laughs> that Suarez showing up to the party is really going to bring in a fiesta. Well, it's not just going to be Bowman. And, there he uh, is. Byron Byron off. Is he out? Surely he not this way. He's slid up in that dirt, I think, Kurt. Yeah, he might have. He might have been off uh, line a little bit in turn eight. <laughs> Suarez gives the boot to Chastain, and here he goes. They open the door up for Byron to get back. No. Nope. This is interesting. Trackhouse is, was the winner here last year. They've got two cars, second and third right now. And the leader from 2311 is trying to nurse the fuel. Well, let's, let's let the track house <laughs> take the gloves off, boys. Byron slid oh. up in the leader Reddick's dirt. Yep. Leader really went through the dirt big time, threw it on Byron's tires and slid him up out of the groove. Been there. That's one of those unwritten rules, right? That's one of those little things that drivers do that people don't know about much. There's just that little bit of boost there. Excuse me, pardon me, coming through. It's like, I've been given the green light. Oh, my. Oh, oh. Brad Kozlowski. That's oh, awesome. looking for a safe That's harbor, awesome. and I don't think he's going to get there. Nope. Oh, that changes everything. 12 laps to go. <laughs> caution out, lap 56. I can't believe I'm saying this. Usually I'm pumped up for cautions. Man, that bummed me out. Boy, the suspense was getting after that it, wasn't it? it? That no. was getting big with the fuel thing. Everything starts new now. Now it's you know, back on, oh yeah, exactly, on your yeah. pit crew, the last little fine adjustments. Back to a race here with, what, nine probably to go. Yeah. Well, Larry, what does that do for us? Am I taking fuel, all of it? This is going to get interesting. I'll tell you when we come back from commercial break. How about that, Clint? <laughs>
Last year on the uh, road course expansion or explosion, first career cup wins for these three drivers. And Tyler Reddick doubling up. Christopher Bell, the most recent winner. You know, we were talking strategy before the caution and before the break. And I'm looking at Kyle Busch, uh, who was on pit road 11 laps after everybody else uh, on the lead lap. Uh, he would not have to stop to go the distance, and there may be others uh, that could probably stay out and not pit Larry and ride it out. Yeah, I mean, we've got 32 drivers on the lead lap, Mike. We're going to go back racing probably with about nine to go, and they have 13 green flag laps. There, there's no doubt the drivers, the crew chiefs, everybody wants to pit and put four fresh tires, but I can almost promise you there's going to be a number of them that roll the dice and try it, especially those in the back. As I've always said, if you follow the leader, you know what? You're going to follow the leader. <laughs> I like that, Larry. And uh, one thing that, that Kyle Busch has, he already has a W. He's got a win this year. So you may as well just go for the gamble and go start up on that front row if you can get it. I don't think there's, well, let's see. Denny Hamlin, Kimi Raikkonen, uh, Ryan Priest, Cody Ware, all in the same situation. Uh, they pitted about the same time as Kyle Busch. So I would expect most of them to stay out. That's it. I, Pits are know, open. If you stay out, you can't be the lone wolf. I, you'll never make it. But this, uh, these few laps under caution help those leaders gain the fuel back that they needed, but they've got nothing for a green-white checker. I mean, you could try two tires or something. What tire, what two do you put on it? I mean, try to set yourself apart. Man, I just want a good pit stop. Get me a fast pit stop. There we go. Everybody. Everybody at the front is coming, Jamie. Alex Bowman's the first pit box here. He gave information to the team. I haven't gone that hard. It makes you wonder if they'll take rights only. They don't have to wait on the fuel. You see they'll use that one can there. They used a code word. Yep, right now they just called four tires for the 48 Regan. Well, the one car, Ross Chastain, they've been making gains on that car all day long. At one point earlier today, was chattering the rear tires, but he's happy with it at the moment. The 45 of Tyler Reddick needs a little bit more rear lateral grip, and the 99 of Daniel Suarez said, just give me a little bit of extra air pressure for the end of this run. So here's your race off pit road. Oh, no. Sponsored by Ram. Where's Big time trouble on that Chastain car way oh. back there. Holy smokes. So Reddick is the first off pit road, but he will not be the leader. At least five cars stayed out. Christopher Bell, Kyle Busch. Here's a look at the Chastain uh, pit stop. Hamlin, Raikkonen, and Priest all stayed out. Oh, that right Didn't have that nut on. Jack that thing back up. It's not on. Got it. His teammate Suarez had trouble too. Not a good pit stop for track house racing they were some of the they're always some of the best on pit road so tyler reddick will come out 12th in line uh this will cycle through we'll we'll update uh they now have him sixth five cars stayed out reddick will be sixth byron seventh suarez eighth bowman ninth austin dillon tenth the five drivers who stayed out once again Christopher Bell, Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Kimi Raikkonen, Ryan Priest. Interesting, interesting. Um, if I remember right, I, I think that's one of the strategies that you know the 20 car had last year when I was teammates with those guys is there was some big gambles that they would throw down on road courses. And we're seeing a little bit of that with Denny Hamlin, two cars behind. Talking about this choose cone rule, this is something new for road courses. Chase, I want your opinion on this. If I'm Reddick and I've got some ground to cover quick with these guys on old tires, which lane do I want to be in at the top of that hill in one? That's a great question. <laughs> and I don't even know that he has the answer to it right now because, you know, I, he's going to be starting what, around 10th or 12th, somewhere in that somewhere in that area. Um, well, maybe not that far back, but, you know, I, I think he's in a position where you just don't want to get crashed. He has the upper hand. He's in a position where he's going to be able to outlast these guys for these final six or seven laps, get through turn one and two, make the ground you can make, but don't hurt your car in the process. And with his pace, he's going to be in a good position. 
Two fellows I want to watch are Denny Hamlin and Ryan Priest. They both overcame penalties and they both uh, I think fit the adage I'd rather be lucky than good any day. This race has fallen right in their laps and Larry informs me the 11 and the 41 only have one green flag lap on their tires. So of course they stayed out. Boy Kurt. Are they going to get through turn one? <laughs> Some of them will. Yeah. I'm looking at timing and scoring, and it shows that Raikkonen last pitted with the same grouping of cars. So Bush, Hamlin, Raikkonen, and Priest, according to this data. So this is uh, this has got all the makings of what a typical NASCAR race has at the end. And this is the, the survival on which lane you end up in and what kind of luck you have. I mean, a car to, to watch that I'm going to just stay glued to is Raikkonen. Like, welcome yes. to the show, boys. This is this is what you've built up for. So it's it's going to be pretty wild with all these different cars and these in, in which lane they chose. Bell's the one with those 13 lap tires that have big time uh, disadvantage. You know, the guys that pick behind him, you need to spit him out as fast as possible. All right, Gunter, Kimi Raikkonen. One green flag lap on his tires. He's sitting here in fourth place. What are we going to see? See if he can stay cool, huh? You know, I think he can. Uh, hopefully, he doesn't get into trouble. But uh, I think he's uh, a veteran enough of racing that he can that he st stays out of trouble. But you never know with these guys. When they got the possibility, they try to be there. And Kim is one of them. I mean, he was a world champion. So, well, now you know why every seat up at Turn One has been sold, and they've just told Raikkonen on the radio, "Be aggressive on this restart." Be aggressive and be ready for contact. That's what you have to be as an open wheel guy. Be ready for contact with these stock cars. Here we go. Man, a great jump for Bell. Denny didn't get a good jump at all. Reddick already the hands inside. Great restart for Reddick. Look at him crazy. All over the place. Right and down goes way outside Dillon. and one car around Austin Dillon. Well, more than one car around. That uh, is, is that Chastain? Chastain, Chastain as well. Uh, well, that was ugly. Chastain's broke left rear. Almondinger was involved as well. We may have another caution here. Look at that. Reddick to Redick the point. Was able to grab the lead from that third row. That's incredible. I mean, just for the breaking zones that he's been able to capitalize on. Caution. I was going to say, they're probably going to be cautioned with debris and cars not rolling. They'll have to remove Ross Chastain's car. Well, let's re rack him. <laughs> Remember he had a bad pit stop and that's how he ended up back there. You'll see that light blue number one come into view here. Love this drone footage. You see the baby blue car in the far right. And there's going to be about five guys to his inside. Four into the, I think it's a 16 that got into the three. Then on the outside, Eric Jones gets into Chastain, spins him around. We'll watch from uh, Ryan Blaney's Ford onboard camera. What do you do here, Gunther? Hope and pray. Yeah, that's the only thing you can do up in the middle of there. That's the only thing you can do. All right, Kurt, now you can say it. Cautions breed cautions. OK, all right, all right. Yep. <laughs> Denny out there off the racetrack. And Almendinger with a flat right front. And four, maybe more. Four got into the back of, I think that was who that was, into the back of him. That put him into the back of the 31, or the three, and turned him around. Nine laps to go in Austin, Texas. After this on the restart.
Eight laps to go. There's what they're racing for. The Echo Park Automotive Grand Prix trophy in the shape of Circuit of the Americas. Eight laps and at least one restart to go. Here's why we're under caution. Restart, turn one. I love this aerial shot. Uh, we've got Reddick in row three. You got to stay in line till the start finish line, which is right there under Echo Park. Boom. Makes the move to the inside. And look at this. He just swallows these guys up in that front row. Denny didn't get a good jump in front of him. There was a big gap between Bell and Denny. Gave him an opportunity to pounce on Denny early. And then watch how fast and deep he gets into the corner compared to the competition. Listen to this just knows how to put it right on that edge. Love it. And then Kimi seemed to survive that restart. He only lost two spots in yep. that full exchange, so not bad. So coming to the choose, you heard Reddick lock it up just a bit when the engine went silent there for just a bit. The rears were locked up, but uh, he had full control, and boy, nobody outbreaks Tyler Reddick around here. And one of the key things that's really tough to explain, though, but they are not at the normal speed as you would have on a regular lap. That They're restarting at 45 miles per hour, so you can go in deeper than you think on a restart. So have we seen our last caution flag? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Let's check in with Shannon and Jamie in the Charlotte studio. Well, like you heard Kurt Busch say it, right? Caution breeds cautions. If we can make it through that turn one without a caution, these guys can get going. What are you expecting to say, Jamie? Well, Tyler Reddick obviously has the racing control, has, has the front row, but the guy right behind him, William Byron, has been a factor in this race as well. Is he going to get a little more aggressive on this restart? We know how good Tyler Reddick has been in the breaking zone. The guys have been talking about it, but what's William Byron going to do? Those guys have certainly been the class of the field today. It's going to be fun to see how this race plays out. If we can get through turn one, Kurt, don't say it again. <laughs> I will try not to, but I do know <laughs> that everybody gets meaner and meaner when there's single digit lap counts left. So with eight to go, we'll see. All right, let's listen on William Byron's radio. You know, do what you need to do to get around those guys and run down that 45. That's our objective here. Got that, we'll let you do your job. Hey, William, go out there and show to yourself the badass you are. Four. Now that is the Max <laughs> Pappas, the Mad Max that we know on the radio to William Byron. I mean, this is how much of a block are you going to throw? What is uh, William going to dish him? This this is when it gets mean. This is this is when NASCAR is at its finest. It's a very different etiquette, Gunther, when it comes down to the end of these races. Yeah, you just go for, and it's a much safer uh, way to do it as well. You know, in an F1 car, you cannot do these things. But yeah, it's just part of the etiquette, as you say. When it gets to to, uh, to, to get to win, you have to do what you have to do. You know? Yeah, but if you end up tearing that thing up, well, you, you have to make that call. That's what you do on that show, right? Make I got to call Gene. <laughs> Pace car is in. And here they come. Reddick and Bell. Toyota's up front with Truex. First Chevy is Byron in fourth. The first Ford is Priest in seventh. Back to green. Step one, get a decent jump. Step two, check near, block. Step three, survive. Hit your mark, sir. He missed the corner. Yep. Ah, sure did. Williams on there. He's, he's like, did he clear him? Yes. William got him. Now the race is on. And there's new player, Bush. Kyle Bush. Yes, sir. Bunch of new players have jumped in. Truex. Takes me right back to that turn and exactly listening to what you were saying, Kurt. Overdrove that corner, looked in the mirror. Saw oh, the somebody got dumped. Bell got it back going. Took a hit, got spun around, and restarts. Oh, oh and he was probably just got it to Jordan Taylor. Taylor right there. There we go. You know Tyler's not going to back down. Neither is that boy in that 24 car. Have some experience door-to-door -door battles. Had a good one yesterday. Wasn't quite the right time to toss it in there. So we have a race on our hands. This is going to be epic all the way down to the end. The car with the most straightaway speed, leading the car with the best braking performance. Turn 12, sharp left-hander, and now you go into the stadium section. Two rights, two lefts, bunch of different apexes and mix. Oh, oh, oh. we'll slip up. It's too far away to throw anything in there right now. Truex looking inside for third. 
Yeah, it doesn't look like Kyle Busch can maintain the pace that he needs to to hang with those top two. So Truex is going to be all over him here. AJ Allmendinger has taken his car to the garage. Such a hard thing to stay out of that mirror, especially when you know the car behind you, strong suit, is getting into the corner, Kurt. Suarez coming back with Bowman right in his draft. Truex splits them. Behind them, Michael McDowell, Ryan Priest, Kimi Raikkonen, and Joey Logano, the top ten. Say that again, who's running ninth? Yeah. That's right. Oh, well, now he just got past. Him. Oh, darn. We'll he break lock out. up there. <laughs> Suarez body slam Truex. Not going to be happy with that. See if he retaliates. Meanwhile, back at the front. These guys are just mirroring each other. One's fast in one section, through. one's fast in another section. This is where Tyler usually is at his best through here. And it's like William seems to be better on the other side of the track. Here comes that braking zone. I don't think he's close enough yet. I don't think so. He's just going to be focused on corner exit here. William is doing such a good job of, of making sure he's good on the on the corners that count. And what I mean by that is that 10 that sets up that breaking zone in 11 got off of 11 goods going to seize another got another good gap. No way he could dive bombing from that far back getting into another passing zone in 12. Yeah it's that magical distance right there. Tyler knows that he can't make up that much distance on a breaking zone. So it could be a little cat and mouse. Man, these guys are working it. It's going to come down to a big slip up or something that that costs time on the 24 or the 45. What they are doing, though, is driving away from the competition. Yeah, it does look like the eight car of Kyle Busch stabilized. He's now holding third with a, with a decent gap. Two best cars. No question the two best cars. They were on the front row. Two best cars of the weekend going at battle at here at the end of the race. It's what it's all about. It's the way it's supposed to be. Austin Dillon shortcut the S's. He'll get a pass through. Trying to force one another into a mistake. If you're Reddick, you make that thing, show him everything, and look at Byron moving around, trying to keep that wake out of him. Getting away from him, a 2.12.95. Pretty impressive lap out of William Byron in the lead, 2.13.17 out of Reddick. That is Byron's fastest lap of the race. That's impressive. You know, now the pay window's open. That's exactly what I'm talking about. And him rising to that occasion, it's what he's been able to do this year over the others. What did Max Pappas just tell him? Show him what a badass you are. He's I like it. it. I like it. Whoa. There's the pressure. He's close this time. This is a setting up for a passing zone. He's we haven't got loose. Oh, yeah. He's not going to hesitate on this one. No, sir. Let's see, now it's a matter of do you keep your momentum, keep that minimum speed up through the apex? And he's able to close the door. It was almost like he brake checked. He knew he was one to do a crossover, and he brake checked him, waited on that. Slick move by Reddick. I like it. I did that one time on Jimmy Johnson at Martinsville, and I think I did it by accident. Let's see if he's able to hold him off. The kind of dive bomb block. Reddick moves back out, got him in the mirror. There you go. You use up that exit. With him. You can use up all that exit right there. Ooh. This is where it gets front bumper to back bumper time. Does he hit him? Not yet, huh? Man, you may have to, to keep him at, at arm's length here. That's what I was just thinking. You might have to hit him just to kind of just rattle his cage a little bit. Just make him a little squirrely. Reddit could try to slide away here. He may not no be able to. I mean, now that he's got that clean air. That's what I was saying. The 24 might need to pull, pull a little trick out of the bag. Well, and that trick is rough him up. I mean, let's just face it. You're going to have to, if, if you get close enough to him, rough him up and, and rattle his cage. 
but that's it. Like, if you don't have that next opportunity to do it, you lost your chance. So this, this will be an interesting lap to see what kind of lap time these guys are going to lay down. That's a lot of discipline right there out of Reddick. He backed that corner up, overdrove one for that restart, and handed that lead to William Byron. What do you think, Chase Elliott? What do you got left in your little bag of tricks? Oh, man. I, I mean, I think for, for Tyler, obviously, you know, not getting through turn one was, was not good, but he's been outpacing William. I thought he did a really good job of being patient with him and, and not running him over. And I think for that reason, William's going to gonna pay that respect back. I mean, Tyler did race him clean, you know, got the pass and, and is doing exactly what he needs to do. I think it's going to be really hard for William to get, to get back by. I think his best chance was to, to hold him off. But uh, some great racing for the lead, though. Exactly right. I think there was a lot of respect between those two. It's something that we didn't quite expect, but when you think about it, Byron with his wins, Reddick likes to be caution is out. What? I saw it on the wall there. Debris. Sure is. You got some debris. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> Clint, did you throw dirt down again? Just when we thought we had this settled. <laughs> I didn't mean to say it earlier. I'm sorry about that caution, green caution thing. All right, stay poised. <laughs> oh, oh, there it is. Probably that, out of the back of the three car. That could be the debris. It's too bad. Austin was doing a good job. Had the track position, got wiped out at the top of the hill on the, on the restart there. In this game, in this day and age, you have to be ready for a caution at any time. There's nothing that ever closes out the race as cleanly and easily. Dylan would have been the free pass car. He was one lap down. So I don't believe there will be one. Now the haymakers start coming out. That'll leave us with 31 lead lap cars. I think Suarez is going to be one to watch on this restart. He's been very aggressive. He's been able to dive bombs. Car makes good grip. <laughs> Oof. So it looks like we'll go to overtime. Uh, but first, let's show you where Tyler Reddick took the lead from William Byron. Yeah, that starts out of his little favorite section, 8, 9, that's 10, and then just outbreaking him down into 11. Started with William. He, he forced William to make a mistake. William slid up at least a little bit, gave him that momentum advantage, took it. Very true. Yeah, he did have a couple bobbles in that. But now, like, man, as a racer, again, here's that pass for the lead. So he had him up out of the groove, got a little bit loose, got under him. And then, like we were saying, he may have held him out a little longer than he expected. Right there. And then go. Those are those little things that sometimes drivers are able to, to manipulate. But, man, road course racing, NASCAR these last few years, if it's under five laps to go, it's almost like we're done racing. It's now survival. Well, yes, because that racing re with respect thing is going to go right out the window when we go to overtime. Green, white, checker. Let's remind you of what happened last year. A.J. Allmendinger. Bowman the leader, but Chastain sends Almondinger into Bowman and drives away to victory. Well, that was the aftermath. And I know AJ was upset, but he, AJ moved him getting into 12. That was all kind of a back and forth situation. And obviously Chastain made the last punt that uh, that finished him off. But that's exactly what can happen and probably will happen right here at the end. Tyler Reddick, radio. Currently on these restarts. I just can't find a good spot to get into one. You have 10 more. Think about what you were using for your marker and just look around for something else that might be uh, more notable. Got a couple of caution lines here to check it out. What he means by that, you just don't use the same, you know, obviously your markers and everything else aren't the same getting into one as they are in race conditions. Trying to find that spot of where too far is in a sweet spot. And oh, by the way, you're looking in the rear view mirror to make sure that somebody's not going to run you over. 
a lot going on there. Yeah, he needs to build up that confidence. I mean, he came from the third row back one time and left with the lead. Now he's the leader. He just needs to know and feel it from the, where he needs to break and where he needs to cut and get the heck out of there. Look at those restart ranks this season. William Byron fourth in restart performance. Todd Reddick tenth. And a quick update on our road course ringers. Kimi Raikkonen uh, holding his own there at 17th. Jordan Taylor is rebounded for 20th. Jensen Button is 26th. They are all on the lead lap. I mean, Raikkonen was just fourth. <laughs> it's like, well, that was a restart or so ago, yes. <laughs> it's crazy how things can change real quick. Well, look at Truex. Look at, uh, you know, McDowell, Priest, Logano. Guys, Briscoe, that you didn't see, um, you know, up front at all all day long. That caution come out untimely, and it really laid right in their lap. So we're going to have one more try at it at least because NASCAR's overtime rules provide that we will keep restarting until the leader crosses the line with one lap to go under the green flag. Once that happens, the next flag will end the race. What do you tell your driver right here, Gunther? Not a lot. I mean, drivers, you know, you just say, uh, do the best you can, but they know that. This, uh, I think at this point, to speak with them, I think it's better that they keep their focus on what they need to do. Sometimes less is more, and uh, they know exactly what's going on. I mean, if they've got something to ask, they ask, like Reddick did before, you know, uh, I'm struggling on the restarts, but normally, just in these situations, when something comes like this, I always leave them alone. Leave okay. them to themselves. I'm coming at you in a different way, then. I'm going <laughs> to ask it again. Which one of them horses you want out there? Which one? Which driver do you want in what car do you want driving for you? I mean, it's between Reddick and, and Byron, I think, at this uh, at this time. So yep. I, I would say Byron did a better job in the restarts uh, uh, today. You know, when, when when they were in the front, you know, not uh, when they were behind, Reddick did a good start as well and gained a lot of stuff. But, you know, when you're in the first lane, you need to have the confidence. Yeah. That is that is what you have to have. That what it is all is exactly going into that turn, being confident I can do it. Sometimes right, so it goes well, sometimes not. So Chase. Do you want Williams starting next to Reddick or right behind him? That's exact, I was really just thinking about that, too. And it's interesting listening to your point of view, Gunther, especially just with the way these restarts are different than, than what you see on the F1 side. But if I'm William, I think I really consider second row inside because I think if you're on that front row, uh, if somebody is going to bulldoze uh, Tyler out of the way, which – Odds are pretty good. I think I think Tyler's in a really tough spot being the leader. Uh, if you're in the outside of that first row, you're going with him, and, and you're likely going to be in a lot of trouble too. So I think if you're William, you think about lining up third and putting yourself on offense and hoping for the best. Tyler's blown two of these restarts today going wide uh, out of one. So That's a really good like point. Yeah. Yeah. Whole another strategy. All right, so uh, Tyler Reddick got some advice on the radio. In line, take your defensive moves there so you don't have to be turning when you get down closer into the corner. You don't want to be turning and changing lanes in the braking zone. Pick the defensive move before you start braking, and then just make sure you get back to your, your corner speed. Your corner speed on these restarts has been a little bit more than race laps. That's what leads to uh, not being able to get the exit. Copy, copy. Good advice. Thank you. I like it. That's Billy Scott helping him find that confidence and find tools in his toolbox. Here's the choose sector. And oh. goes back to the outside. Iron goes to the outside. outside. And it's I, interesting. I think Kyle Bush is in the right spot. I was just going to mention him. <laughs> it's funny you say that because yeah, he has a win. He's got nothing to lose. Right. And that's the, you know, they just both kind of swap cars in a sense. That's interesting. But to calm Reddick down and just give him that bit of confidence, now like he just, I know he feels better. And I think he's going to be able to execute it. Kyle Busch was 26th prior to the caution at lap 58. Uh, that was eight laps and a couple of cautions ago. Kyle would have to do exactly what Chase is talking about, though. you got to get to the top of the hill, and you're going to have to give the 45 the boot, 45 in to, to Byron on the outside, and there's your hole. I don't know that Kyle will do that, though. I really don't, unless you have the pressure from I, behind. I agree. I agree completely. And if I'm Tyler in this situation, I feel like he's he's surrounded in front and behind by some drivers who are respectable guys who he's been racing with throughout the day. They've shown each other respect. I don't see any of those guys running through him like like some others might. 99. 
Daniel Suarez had not seen his mom in several months, had not seen his sister in over a year. But they drove six and a half hours to Austin from their hometown, Monterey, Mexico. They're here for this weekend's race. And they might just be in Vicky Lane. I told you, keep an eye out for him. I think he's the quiet one here with, with a pretty good opportunity if these racers get side by side beating and banging on each other. If it ain't at the top of the hill, it could be through the messes. Don't forget about the dirt. Yeah, Suarez, he won at Sonoma last year, but he likes this stuff. He likes the contact. He likes finding ways to find the new hole and to get out and squirt out into the lead. I mean, he's a wild card for sure. Well, he ain't afraid to make a hole. Nope, not at all. Right now, there's nobody in the top 12 that can't win it. All right, we're going to overtime, sponsored by Credit One Bank. Green, white, checker. First step is you got to get this launch. You're in control, Tyler. Next, you've got to get turn one. Green flag. It's pretty slow. Everybody's right there. We're in line here. Still in line. All right. Still. Stay. Cut it. Wide. Push under him. He's going to be okay. Williams way wide. Tyler's got the right line. And Kyle Busch is right there. Greg's in around, several cars around in the back. How about that? Now you got Kyle Busch, the car you used to race, is now your blocker back there in P2. Yeah, best case scenario for them. Question is, are these cars going to get cleaned up? A lot of cars around backwards back there. But for Byron, that takes me right back to what I heard Chase Elliott saying. As soon as he said it, I said, boy, that ain't a bad move. It's exactly what Kyle Busch took advantage of. And everybody get back on again. Best case scenario for Tyler Reddick. Down into turn 11. Have Everyone got away from that melee in turn one. So we stay green. Get around here to this white flag if you're Tyler Reddick. Roll, buddy, roll. Nice lead. This is where you're in the car, right, Clint? You're like, no whammies. No whammies. You don't want anything to pop up to create a yellow. You've got a nice gap. You just got to get back to the line and take the white. Ooh, oh, you mean that? no. <laughs> that ain't going to be enough. No though. whammies. Can't throw a caution for that. That's where th there was a caution before. Through the stadium. Going for that debris right. all over the racetrack, though. It's still green. He's got a nice gap, right, Mike? Yeah. Reddick's maintaining. Yes. Right there at one second. Over Kyle Busch, William Byron, Daniel Suarez, oh, and the out. yellow Daniel. is out. I told you, no whammies. I didn't think you could with Blaney, and, and the, but there was debris flying out of the back of that thing all over the place. Have to see what's on the racetrack. Dirk. Uh, there's pretty much a yard sale out there. But he's yeah. not the only one with trouble. I That's think that was, was it Priest, Priest behind him? Yeah. Yes. Ooh. So Priest ran hard up against somebody. With that front end damage, likely Ooh. blew it on the racetrack, I would say. Yep. Yeah, that thing's ready for the chop yard. Not sure who he hit, but it was a ton. Going to need a lot of carbon fiber to fix that one. Kyle Larson gets the free pass. Let's go back to the restart. I mean, to me, this was a very civilized top three rows. And then if somebody tries to shoot the middle. A lot of door slamming back there. Blaney gets spun around. Oh, oh there's where Priest got turned and yep. hit. And that was the start of the pileup back there. The issue is the funnel effect because the gravel sneaks up on you on the exit of this corner. Watch the gravel way out there. And the car's got to jump back on. Priest, the red car, way on the outside, and he's going to be in trouble right here. Had to do exactly what Kurt was talking about. Had to get back down to stay out of that gravel. Gets turned around. From Ryan Blaney. Oh, that's frustrating. Josh Balicki involved there. Justin Ryan, Haley's just view. ready to get this day over with. Yeah, he is. Wow. 
<laughs> I remember that from last year. It's just, it's like a war zone out there. There's just shrapnel going everywhere. And there's a pair of debris. Billy Scott's got to get his driver set for one more restart. Well, okay. We talked about William Byron, Chase. Now what happens here? He's going to be. Bush is going to stay right there where he's at. You think he'll take that inside lane? I'd be shocked if Kyle didn't take third again on the inside, right? I mean, it worked out great for him that time, and, and I think that he knows that now. I think William's probably kicking himself for not taking the inside of the second row. Uh, but... If Kyle does take the front row for whatever reason, de uh, definitely would, would take that second row bottom if you're William. But I just want to point out, it was a lot of respect given on that restart. And to me, as a racer, uh, growing up and watching this stuff, that's how I want to see these races go. I don't want to see somebody, you know, run through there and, and, and push all those guys wide up front just because their front bumpers are, are strong now. I just, I, I really thought that was, that was nice to see that they ran in there hard, they raced clean, and, and they were able to, to get through there in the first couple of rows at least. Yeah. One little key factor that, that Tyler Reddick has going for him is that Kyle Busch has won. William Byron has won a race. That's where you see a little bit of the extra respect is that they have won already this year. If they haven't, you might see something a little different. And it's the chances of wins you can get throughout the year. If, if you're a guy that might have one sliver of a sniff at the lead late in the race and you're not a guy that usually wins races, you're going to take that big, bold move and, and try to dump the guy. Well, it takes me back to the jump, too. You know, Reddick, you heard me say, I thought he slowed them down quite a bit. That was a strategy move on how you're going to get the jump. Do you do something different? You stick to it, you know, trying to that that craftsmanship, gamesmanship, and that is is where the magic is. So making a good decision on your jumps a big, big time importance. All right, first we're going to listen to uh, Kyle Busch's radio about the choose. What you thinking here? Got to stay left. Yep, I totally agree. I'm with him, Randall. You choose the top, you're kind of leaving yourself vulnerable for that middle lane or getting punted and washed out, and then just totally for your entry of two, being out too wide off of one. Well, you know what he's going to do, but I, that's new life for Byron. Again, get that jump, go to that outside, take advantage of it. Drive that boy off in that corner. Jamie? Kyle Busch's crew chief, Randall Burnett, what do you think? You're talking to your driver. You know he's on a little bit older tires than the top five. You think he's got enough to get it done here? Well, I don't know. Obviously, the 45 and the 24 has been the class of the field today, but uh, we got one of the best in the business behind the wheel here, so we'll see what we can make happen. Pretty cool having that spend on the car down here in Austin. Uh, they're based here in Austin, so uh, really good day for them. We've had a lot of fun here. Uh, like I said, that 45 and 24 have been really tough. So we'll see how it goes. Anything can happen at the end of these. I think the guy restarted third here last year won, so uh, we'll see what happens. All right, Kyle Busch restarting second, Mike. That's right. Now, fellas, you talked about drivers who might be willing to take chances, and I'm looking at Daniel Suarez and Michael McDowell. Road course races are their best opportunity to get to victory lane, and they are currently fourth and sixth. They're right in the mix. Well, that would be the road to keep your eye on as far as a full send and making, making the best of what they can. I mean, it again, it's not necessarily racing in a sense. It's more about survival, and there is an art to surviving the right way, and we'll see how this plays out. It's a good run for Truex. Took advantage of, of these cautions coming out. Again, is one of those guys that kind of helped out, right? The, the untimely caution laid in his lap, and he took advantage of it. Well, Ryan Priest made repairs, got back on track, but that little choo-choo is not going to make it to the top of the hill. Nope. That's going to... It's going to take a call so, back to Gene. I, I was going to say, uh, yeah. this is not me having to call back to Gene today. You know, it's somebody else. <laughs> Zippy. High deductible there. Daniel Suarez, uh, audio. Message, I got. Go P5, force it down left, you know. Remember last night what AJ did. AJ did it yesterday for P5. Similar thing, you know. It's all about the exit of the launch of one. Stats say to take short roll, but uh, we'll leave it up to you here. Yeah, who we'll told you? Thank you. There you go. Yep. Inside. 
Nice shot from our Coke Zero cam on Daniel Suarez. So while they work their way around to restart under overtime for the second time, well, let's take you back. Chaos on lap two. Jimmy Johnson getting turned around. Ty Dillon knocked out of the race in that one, along with the seven-time champion running a partial schedule this year. And then uh, Bubba Wallace. They're getting into Kyle Larson. Good bit of damage there. And Denny Hamlin turns Larson around. He ends up against the guardrail and Wallace out of the race. The funnel. Lap 59. That's like Log Jam City. That's my favorite right now. <laughs> and this is just what happened. The last restart. And we've got shrapnel everywhere. Priest and Blaney damage. Blaney able to repair and continue. Looks like Priest may be done. We need for the day. Sell turn one t shirts. Kind of like the 16th hole at the, at the golf tournament out there in Phoenix. It's you want to see action, you park your butt up there on turn one. You're going to see all the action you want. Doesn't the Roval sell turn one? Like it's like Tums Mayhem Corner or something? I don't know. It, they have a sponsor for it. Yeah. Yep. That's that's pretty much what we all do on these road courses. We go down to turn one and <laughs> lose our minds. <laughs> turn, turn it into ping pong balls. So, second try at overtime, same rules. Green, white, checker. The leader must take the white flag under the green flag for the next flag to end the race. Well, here we go. You guys know who I'm rooting for, and it's just all still about execution. You got to hit all the right steps, no matter what position you're in. Reddick Byron, Bush Truex, Suarez McDowell. Back to green. Got to stay in line at the start finish line. Here we go. Big push from the inside. McDowell oh, sends it on the outside. Huge dive. They're in a Reddick underneath of him. Around right. goes Truex. He's not clear just yet. Look at Chad Stain. Where did he come from? 45 is not clear. He's going to have to race the eight side by side through the S's. A lot of give and take, a lot of room between these two. That is great. Push him wide, clear. Got 200 cars running 3 4. Yep, Bowman and Byron contact as they battle for third. Chastain in fifth. McDowell sixth. William missed. Reddick is clear. My heart rate's through the roof. I know his is. Hopefully, everybody got cleared up in turn one. Yeah, Truex is the. He was the one that uh, got spun around up there. That's too bad. He had a good day going. Huge dive bombs. Yep, this corner can have the same thing as turn one. Oh, another Let's spinner. See. Taley. He's able to continue on. Here we go, down the back straightaway. I'm not saying anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Turn 12 is another zone for people to dive in there. Boost, still driving away. We got another one around. Just has to get around here to the white flag. Not many corners left. Well, there goes McDowell. Another one around. Yep. <laughs> got turned around by Cindric, it looks like. Kyle Bush trying to hold off Bowman. Three wide there, crunch, crunch. Oh my gosh. What am I and the at? caution is out. For what? Oh, yellow, all full course. Oh, everything down. Probably debris out there again. The tire off Daniel Suarez shredded all over the racetrack. And uh, we had a couple more cars, including Christopher Bell, spin around. So we'll re rack and try it again. Well, oh, Kimmy hey. Raikkonen okay. caught up in it. Oh, no. Suarez was at the top of the hill. He got. Door slammed at the top of the hill. Hey, the respect you were talking about, Chase, it gone. Yeah, it's out the window now, huh? I was I was thinking Tyler was going to get off the hook, but I don't think. Uh, obviously, it's not over yet. Yeah, hated hated to see some of that, but you know these things are just they get so aggressive at the end of these things, and when you continue to have opportunities at, at green white checker after green white checker, and guys are getting in positions. 
It's uh, it's tough. I mean, I thought I thought he had a great launch. He did it all right, and now he's got to do it again. Now watch Truex there. Oh, Suarez got into him. Yeah, Bowman put it in there, then Suarez. Yep. Yeah, it's a chain reaction from the inside. That's pretty aggressive by Bowman. I'm going to say he was on the inside. Everybody started braking, and his yep. car hadn't slowed down yet. There wasn't cars on the outside of him. And <laughs> he wasn't going to make it. And look, Chastain put him right, put himself right back into the race here. It's pretty wild. You know, it used to be like nosed bumper, nosed bumper. Now it's door, 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 door. Truex, my nose business, and he gets blocked. I was blocked. booming in the Suarez in the Truex. <laughs> but Chastain was right there on the inside of him. From Daniel Suarez. And Ryan Blaney, or excuse me, Martin Truex. See, he's right on edge and doing staying just off the 24 and then gets clobbered. Nothing you can do. Mm -mm. Too bad. This was later in the lap uh, for Ryan Blaney. He's got company on the inside and gets turned. Cody Ware was on him right there. Truex rolling hey, again, I'm but I'm curious what happened on that one. I've overshot it for sure. And Kyle, someone got ran into Kyle there. Yeah, overshot it, overshot it. The 99 ran into the eight, and then he got wrecked from behind. Yeah, on this one, you better be glad you overshot it. Yeah. If you don't overshoot it, you're in it. Yeah, I mean, look where he'd have been back there with the eight, which had the 48 under him, almost turned. It was it was like your brother Kyle saw them coming and, and gas it up a little bit to get to the door of Reddick. That was so close for Kyle, almost got turned around himself. Yeah, you're, you're trying to do all you can to stay off the guy in front of you if you haven't made a, a move to the inside yet, and then. Then you like look in the mirror and double check to see if you're gonna get clobbered. There's so much going on in that short amount of space. So look at that blue car of Ross Chastain. 11 laps ago, he was 28th. And here he is in the top five. And so I guess he's back there now. He was in the top three. Yeah. Well, if he wins again, he could take another watermelon up to the 275 foot tower and splat a couple. That's cool. I, I went and visited Chastain's family farm when we were teammates at Ganassi. Got to see you know where he grew up, got to meet his family and just learn about him because he was gonna be my teammate for a few years. And you know, just a humble kid that was a farmer and the way their whole family's been all these generations, they just work their tails off and you can see that in his driving style. He's a blue collar kid that just has to muscle his way through things right now. Uh, that story sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? That's what I'm kind of saying. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta work your way up hard. And yeah. you know, me and my family, we didn't have a lot of money. My dad taught me how to go to the gas station and mount and dismount my own race tires so that we could save five bucks per tire when we were going to the racetrack. Sure. That, it's, it's the little things like that uh, make you who you are. How about Jordan Taylor up to 10th place in all of this? Our leading uh, road course ringer. I like it. He's able to find some good luck and he's able to find some patterns maybe. Jensen Button into the top 20. Uh, Kimi Raikkonen had a bit of damage there, got spun back to 24th. Fox has some really huge races coming up on the schedule you'll want to make note of beginning with the Bristol Dirt Race on Easter Sunday evening, April 9th. We're on the high banks of Talladega on Fox, April 23rd. And of course, Stock Car Racing's longest night, the Coca-Cola 600, Sunday, May 28th. NASCAR continues next week at Richmond on FS1. But first, we have a race to finish. And correct me if I'm wrong, this is our third attempt. It is. At a green-white checker. So this is it. This will be the final moment of shenanigans that are going to happen. 
no, no, keep no, going? No, no, no. What? That, unlimited that was... attempts. Where did the unlimited says. come from? Um, Have I been out of the car that long? It came from wanting to see these races finish under green. You getting tired, Kurt? My goodness. I was just like, how many more bullets does, uh, does Reddick need to, to dodge? I could tell you, <laughs> he is poor Billy Scott, so close to this win. Nerve wracking to say the least. So Larry, we've had a lot of caution laps, but is, is fuel even a concern for some of these cars like Kyle Busch who is off cycle uh, with the rest of these leaders for when he last pitted? Yeah, he pitted on lap 53, but that was what? About 17 cautions ago, I think. So uh, yeah, ca caution laps that we've run so many, Mike, I, I don't think I don't see that a concern even on him. OK. Man. Kind of goes back, you know, the, the debris caution for the dirt on the racetrack. We'll have to go back and look at that. It sure has changed the perspective of, of this racetrack or this race. Um, you know, I don't know. That's there's an opinion there. There'll be a lot of podcasts, a lot of stuff discussed next week about it. Um, you know, you see a lot of these road courses over the years that, that have that. I've experienced them and I've seen it on both ways. I've seen them throw debris cautions, I've seen them let it go. So uh, Ryan Priest checked and released to the care center. He had so much damage to his car. They gave him that mandatory trip. He will be the eighth car out of the race. That leaves us 30 cars, all of which are on the lead lap as we go to overtime for the third time. Alex Bowman was in a position to win this. He was leading when those three leaders got together on the last lap here last year. Will he have anything for Tyler Reddick? I like the eight though. Kurt, your brother chose right where he was at. Another good one. Yeah, this is interesting because we got Chastain and Bowman both back up in the same spot they were last year and a couple new guys. Well, I mean, Reddick won two road courses last year. It's again, it's any guy's game and it's just how you pull off turn one and how you settle in through the S's. But this is all down towards turn 19 where all this went down right here. One guy in third hits second leader. See ya. Third place car wins. And did you notice who they dispatched on the restart? The eight was Tyler Reddick last year. All right. I mean, at the end of the day here, the, the thing that a bunch of these guys can take away from this, especially the 45, the 24, the speed they've had all day, the execution. And then there's these things that somewhat get out of your control. But Billy Scott, He's as calm as, as I've ever seen a crew chief be. We nope. need him at his best. Want to take home a trophy. That's what I want to take home. Of course we want to take home the trophy. Here we go. My goodness, how many restarts are there? <laughs> as many as it takes. Austin Sindrick back up in the top 10. Gilliland, Briscoe, and Gibbs. Here we go. One more time. A little contact in the zone. What's the 48 going to do? Reddick's got plenty of room behind him, and he's got to get the car to cut. He's clear. Oh. And Bowman's got tapped from behind. Now he's really clear. Most everybody is probably done wrecking back there. Uh, Stenhouse uh, got turned sideways. Don't know if he went around. My goodness. Ten car, a lot of damage here. Yep. Here we go. Bowman's close enough. The new guy, right? Now, Reddick has had to deal with Bo Byron. He's had to deal with Kyle Busch. He's had to deal with Chastain. And this is a new one now, Bowman. Pretty amazing. Same as last year. Same two cars. Two of the three, that is. He's almost close enough for a bonsai. Well, that's what oh, it's going to take. No. Uh-oh. That car's tore up bad. A lot of front end damage. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We'll see if they get going. <laughs> I don't know if they will. 45 is clear. I mean, that's wow, what a launch. Oh, Christopher Bell all torn up. Trying to make it back around. Yeah, we're just trying to get it to the outskirts of the track. They're racing still back here. Stenhouse into the top 10. Kyle Busch having a look on Bowman. He's got the inside. How and about that? Chastain trying. And now those guys are going to be side by side all through this next section. It's going to slow them up big time. That'll allow Reddick to get away. Boink, boink. <laughs> there it is. Now this bumper tag. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I think Ooh. he's going to get around this time, Kurt. It's not up to, to Reddick. It's the other guys not spinning around and throwing trash on the track. But 
Maybe we'll run out of cars eventually. I think you're through the tough parts of the racetrack, those straightaways and stuff like that. I think he makes it around. He's got the lead he needs. This is the final corner to come back around and take the white. Now you got a driver. Give me one more White clean flag. Lap. One lap to go. Next flag ends the race. Kyle Busch at Bowman for second. And they're going to have company. That is a beautiful thing, though, for Tyler Reddick and that 45, guys. It's amazing. 2311 and how fast we're growing and how how much we're doing together. It's forward together on this program. And it brings, brings me a little bit to be choked up. I was hoping to be back in that car, but it's in good hands. And it's a great team, and I love racing with those guys. Reddick running away, second still in doubt. Bowman looking outside for second. And Byron trying to mount a run on Chastain. What a job Reddick has done today, right, Mike? I mean, have you seen that on a road course in a while? He's led 40 of the 74 laps. He and William Byron put on quite a show and dominated. But Reddick in the breaking zones had the measure of Byron and everybody else today. He was so fast, he pitted an extra time and still won this race. Still put himself in position. The speed in this car, the job they did, Billy Scott and company, and that kid behind the wheel, pretty impressive. That is a big nugget to remember, is that they were off sequence, and Billy Scott's like, we have speed, I'm putting you back in with the group, let's take our, our lumps now. And now they're there. here they are. And through holding these guys off of so many attempts at these restarts, so close, and then the caution comes out. Heck, you can't help but to, to root for him. Through 19. Tyler Reddick, a two-time winner on the road courses of the Cup Series last year. Finished top 10 in both Coda races. Pressure here, bring back to the line. Three of his four wins come on the road course. Tyler Reddick, Masters Circuit of the Americas. That's my boy. That's my boy. Hey, that is a monster win, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> that Billy Scott, job, the uh, nerves in job. him. What a what an experience. What a last 20 minutes that that man went through. Kyle Busch, 1.4 seconds back. Let's Alex go. Bowman, 2.3. Chastain and Byron, the top five. Ricky Stenhouse, nice drive up into the top ten behind Austin Sindrick. Then Busher Gibbs and Todd Gilliland worked his way up into the top ten on the, uh, I think, third to last restart. Great finish for Todd Gilliland, tenth place, top ten. LaJoy, eleventh place. Got to be there at the end of these things. I couldn't be any happier for that group at 2311. I mean, just everyone that pulls together there, everyone will say that they'll push the credit and who works harder to the other person that's around them. It's a really good team unity between the two cars. This yeah, kid's going to be excited when he gets out of this car. He's just as excited as the team. Started off rough. First three races, you knew the speed was there. You put that kid in that car. It was a tough go. They found their, their rhythm. Well, before we get down there to celebrate, we want to thank Chase Elliott for uh, joining us today on the call. Uh, hope you had some fun today. Not as much fun as being here, and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you back at the track soon. Yeah, looking forward to being back. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, congratulations to Tyler and, and everybody at 2311. He did a great job. He was tested many, many times there at the end and continued to, to pull through. So congratulations to them. Thank you guys so much for having me and uh, looking forward to seeing you all back at the track. All right, thanks for being with us. Chase Elliott recuperating in Colorado. So Reddick wins for Toyota. Kyle Busch, the first Chevrolet in second, and Austin Sindrick, to no one's surprise, the first Ford today, finishing sixth. Careful on the burn it down comment, right? We had a truck light up the other day. <laughs> what was that, Larry Mack? Jump on in, bud.
Yeah, third driver to win in the 45 car in less than a year. Wow. That's Billy Scott's led them all. But he got the jump that he needed. There was that little contact that might have got the 48 off guard a little bit. But right here, he's able to make the cut and not get hit from behind. It, he did it perfect. It was a masterful job. He held that 48 out just enough, gave the eight a window, but he got up in there deep enough that uh, he was smooth sailing. The eight was blocking the other two, and that was that was the difference, man. Off that the, that off. was a little bit of sprinkle of, of the eight, maybe giving him that extra bit of room and racing him clean. Just listen how hard he gets on the brakes. You know, Kyle Busch gave him so much room going into the corner that Kyle got punted from behind. Yeah, he did end up yep. losing a couple you know, little spots, but he was able to gain him back. Kyle finished second. Aww. That surf. Little boy's first time in victory lane, maybe? Or he's old oh. enough. He was old enough he was around last year. Yeah, the, uh, Tyler's last win was at Kansas uh, last <laughs> September. 13 races ago. He's done a burnout in about every turn. <laughs> there can't be, can't be much tire left on that thing. I don't think Denny Hamlin cares. I don't think MJ cares. Nope. That's a family photo. Yep.